Hey, welcome back to Reselect. This is Dave Gershman. You've arrived just in time to hear our episode about the cars. Uh, This is our possibly last artist overview episode. Pretty long one. Well, they always are. So um, break it up in some manageable bites and, uh, you know, a few different commutes. Prior to this, you've heard that we've been doing some album episodes, and those will continue after this one. Uh, and as far as I'm aware, we will stick with those from here on out. The Cars were a classic pop rock band, new wave to some extent, 1978 through, well, I don't know, I'm not quite sure when they officially broke up, but we're listening to their first several albums from the debut album in 1978 to 1984's Heartbeat City. We're all familiar with the Cars, you know, who... Who can really escape them, or who could escape them at some point? Uh, pe- people of a certain age, let's put it that way, are very familiar with the cars. Eric Green and Sarah Wassel will be with me as always, and we're approaching this from various degrees of familiarity. You'll you'll get to hear all about our various opinions on their various albums and more in this episode. Uh, sit back and relax. Do whatever you're doing. Work on your house with this playing in the background. Make sure to tell everybody you know about Reselect and how much you're enjoying listening to it, uh, assuming that in some way you are, I hope. Please leave comments and rate rate us. Leave any uh, suggestions for future albums. would love to consider those. We will certainly take into consideration every request that comes our way. Let me bring this intro screeching to a halt. A little car's humor there. Let's peel out and get this thing on the road. Sorry. I think you'll be hearing this uh, episode in early May. I may be wrong. I may be wrong, but I believe that's true. Don't want to steer you in the wrong direction, but it may be May when you listen to this. Stuff, no? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only you know the answer. I, to I that. can hear you. I can hear you fine. So the cars. We listened to the cars this past few weeks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I have been listening to them since I was a kid. My brother left this cassette tape, which I'm going to shake around next to the mic because I think the <laughs> ASMR of a cassette tape is oh, really. Yeah. Right? Ooh, I'm going to open it. I like that. Can right? you turn the little spool too, and to make a sound? Um, Try. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's the <laughs> cool. So this is the cassette. Getting chills. Right. That's the sound, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So this is the cassette tape of Heartbeat City. So this was in my house when I was a kid. And also I think my dad must have had some of the vinyl records because I spent a fair amount of time looking at the records as a kid and laughing at the photos of the band. Mm-hmm. Because they're not, <laughs> how shall we put this? Traditionally handsome gentlemen. They're, Except for Ben Orr. Ben Orr, ben Orr is, is quite pretty. Guy. Yeah, yeah he's, he's got some. He's got some pretty he sweet stands che- out. cheekbones. And then there's one of the record covers where he's got. I think it's the back of the Cars first record where he's got a uh-huh. a lollipop he's yeah, eating. Yeah, that was oh, a good look at that. Oh my! One. <laughs> it is. It is no, salacious. That, 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 that red lollipop is like. Nope, that's <laughs> not it. That's not on that one. Candio. Indeed. Yep, that's the one. Yeah, look at him. I was kind of oh, caught yeah. by that He's one got also. this like feathered yeah. blonde hair, yeah. and he's wearing like it's a red collared shirt with like a black blazer of some kind. That's a red lollipop. And he has a very wet red lollipop, like <laughs> just inside of his mouth. Yep. Yeah, but anyway, and then Rick Okasik is in the top left. He is left. not traditionally good looking. No, but you know what? When I think when you look at pictures of him when he was younger, he had blue eyes, mm. like really blue eyes. And he, he's very thin and kind of like stretched out looking. Mm-hmm. And he always has some kind of weird looking haircuts. But I think that's a um, aspect of the fact that there's poor hair products for a long time until yeah. fairly recently. <laughs> and also like, you know, if people have weird haircuts that like in a time period were cool and worked. Right. There's no, probably not a, lot of, there's not a lot of good photos of those haircuts. Like right. in person, they probably looked actually pretty cool. So, but if you look at him on that record, he's got his hair goes like past his ears, like just above his shoulders. Mm. And there's not a discernible part. It's like a weird, 
it's, it's definitely haircut. an eighties look. He's yeah, clearly, and uh, he, he, I'm sure he cut a a very striking presence when you were in a room with him because he was like six foot six, super tall. Yeah, He's pretty tall, and yeah. really yeah. thin, and super thin. And he has yeah. like a long neck, and he has yeah. like a, a wide, like a long space between the bottom of his nose and his mouth. Which yeah. I'm sure there's a word to describe what that is, <laughs> but it, but you know it's just a very like arresting yeah. kind of look, and and the band wears like all of their albums, they're wearing, they're dressed up like they're wearing suit jackets. Yeah, he's he's clearly he's not completely unattractive because because he was married to Paulina Portskova. He was married three times. Well, to her, like twenty something years, yeah, and she was his final, his last wife before he passed away. She was like my major crush when I was in hmm. uh, high school, college, whatever. Which video was she I in? Was, uh, I think she ended up being in one of the Heartbeat City videos, maybe. Right. Oh, Drive. Was she in Drive? Maybe. No, I don't. I'm not sure. Mm. I'm not sure. So how did you know what she looked like? Where did you she see was her that, on the that... cover of Sports Illustrated a few times? She oh. was she was like the big model of the time for oh, that okay. three years. She was like the 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 topest of the top models at the time. Wow! So, so we had rock star marrying model. Yes, who yeah. had been in his video. Yes, who was like swimsuit model. Right, right. And like, how, was she like a high fashion model? Did she walk around? She did some of that too. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. I wow. remember being struck by how this really not very handsome man was with this wildly attractive woman. He must yeah. be a really cool guy or something like that. Well, he's definitely, like, the, he's deep, right? Like, well, he's the lyricist for the yeah, band. He writes the songs for the band. And while the song structure is deceptively simple, I think mm-hmm. the lyrics are, there's a lot going on. Yeah, I mean, he is a very intelligent guy. And, um, and not to pretend like I know anything about their relationship, but she was <laughs> she was actually super intelligent, too. She went to, mm-hmm. she was like, I think she was into, into some science uh study of some science study before becoming a model. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think they connected on some kind of intellectual level Hmm. as much as uh, because he was a cool rock star. I saw some quote of hers and it said, well, I think Rick's a very handsome man. Hmm. Well, I mean, you know, like there's, we know this, there's there's different ways of being attractive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And sometimes for a lot of people, someone who's distinctive looking instead of maybe traditionally, you know, matches like the social norm of what's good looking is a lot more meaningful than yeah. something, someone that looks like a Ken doll or, you know, has the square jaw or whatever the things are supposed to be. Right. That's boring. So Rico Kasich's dad was an analyst for NASA. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. And he had electronics like kind of set up in his house. So apparently when he was younger, Kasich would, um, he would like experiment in there and it kind of turned into his studio. Uh-huh. And one of the things he would do is listen to Buddy Holly music and try to, reproduce the production sound of Buddy Holly's music. Interesting. Which is really interesting because you don't, I think from the outside when you think about the cars, you don't think about the rockabilly and rock and roll aspects of their music, but it's so in there. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. In oh, so yeah. many the, of their the songs. The first album in particular is yeah. definitely Yeah, but I think it's that. throughout all of their stuff. Yeah, it, it makes appearances. And hmm. Actually, um, I, I'm sure that played a part in it too, but Elliot Easton, their guitarist, he was sort of the, the, I wouldn't quite call it roots rocker, but he was really into that kind of old 50s mm-hmm. rock guitar, Carl mm-hmm. Perkins and mm-hmm. all that, and uh, Chet Atkins. And so he brought a lot of that to their sound as well. So mm-hmm. I think the combination probably uh, influenced that. Mm-hmm. This cool guy right here? Uh, that is actually, yes, that's mm-hmm. him. Yeah. Uh, he was a great guitarist. Eric is pointing to the back of the yes. Candio yes, record. Yes, yeah, he's not, he's not sitting with us. those of you following us, along. Uh, yes. Well, so that, so, so Dave Robinson... Or David Robinson, top mm. right, uh, is Danny, the drummer. Yes, yeah, bottom left. Well, who's who's in the top right? Who's that? Greg, is that Greg Hawks. Greg, Greg Hawks. Hawks. He plays the keyboard. Oh yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. He's got a really distinctive look too. Yeah. But apparently, it's the drummer who had a big influence on their visual style. Yes, he did their cover designs or tried yeah, he, to do. Well, well he did the painting of the so. flag on Panorama. He actually created that painting. Mm-hmm. Oh. I'm not sure if I knew that, but I know he was involved in trying to do all their cover designs, and it didn't always end up. The way he, well, like the the first album with the, mm-hmm. the woman at the car with the, the, the wheel with the clear steering wheel. Yes, the clear. So yeah. cool. <laughs> they created that apparently, or the the photographer created that himself. Hmm. The steering wheel, but the photographer was not David Robinson. But he what he wanted was a collage, a black and white collage of the band, 
like uh, like sixteen little pictures on the cover which is or which is in which is in the in the yes liner. I think it ended up right yeah it's it in the liner and it says it credits him with it actually so it's that yeah it's the this first one, this, one. this first so. one with the silver border yeah I think the record company is. prevailed upon them to let this other photographer do it and he was actually a well known fashion photographer I think who the drummer the was. No, the, no sorry, the, the photographer ended up doing the the, co- mm. the photo shoot. Yeah, they're uh, very fashiony looking. Yeah, I mean, it ended up being a very very iconic album mm-hmm. cover, and I think it's probably a better choice than what he would have wanted to be. Well, with. that's mm-hmm. wild conjecture. Mm. Uh, well, given that we actually have a version of it here, I would say the other ones, the album, in my opinion, the other one's mm. the better album cover. So it's well, more it's, more eye catching. Well, it's definitely so. a more singular image, obviously, because yeah. the others are collage. But you never know, like if it's if it's got the glossy application and it's like on the cover instead of tucked right. away inside, yes. the impression yes. of it's it not printed would on be different. It's best here yeah. either. So. But all that aside, it's a fucking great album cover. Yeah. Uh, Candy O, though, uh, that's which that one. Is such a, an eye catching girl. Yeah. yeah. Apparently, the story behind that is that he, David Robinson had the idea uh he had some connection because uh i think he knew the niece of varga mm. and she was a big fan of the cars mm-hmm. and so through that he, he he always appreciated his artwork and so he, even though varga had retired mm-hmm. he was in his 80s when he did this this piece oh yeah they they brought him out of retirement to uh, to paint that and here's an interesting fact the the woman who modeled for that her name is actually candy Oh, no way. However, they already had the title Candy O. It has not, mm. it's apparently not named hmm. after her. She is also, she was an actress who played Lucille Ball's daughter back in the early 60s, uh, like a young teen daughter um, on this on the Lucy show. Not the... Not you know, I Desi Love Lucy. Or, not I Love Lucy, mm-hmm. but yeah. like a second later mm-hmm. series. And uh, she did a few other little movies and TV shows, but she ended up becoming a model. And mm. so she, they have photos of posing on top of this car, this Ferrari, and uh, Varga took the photos, or actually maybe, maybe they took the photos and then gave them to Varga. So he used those as his the basis for his mm. his, his artwork. Yeah, I mean, mm. it, I know that like it's obvious that there's a car image included in the Candio cover that the woman is laying on, right? And then the first record where there's a woman driving a car, mm-hmm. and then the, the Heartbeat City has like a car on it yeah. as well, which. I, like I a, swear to you guys, I never put that together until today. How yeah. obvious that is. The panorama has the, fi- the, f- yeah. the checkered flag at the car race. It's it's interesting. I feel like to shake it up have a, an obvious car uh, reference here. Or? Uh, not on oh, the yeah, cover. Yeah. Shake it up has this like this photo is so soft focus. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like it's about to disappear. Like I, I yeah. look at it and I gotta like blink a few times. I'm it's like, like, is it fading? <laughs> It's like they're, you're looking at her through a window of a steamy room or something, yeah. and she's just barely visible. Either. But again, like That's what cool. I was talking about with the hyper, hyper femme, like it's so aggressive. It's like beyond like a woman posing yeah. with a cocktail oh, yeah. shaker. Yeah. She's almost like it's almost a grimace, you know? Just, right. It's just short of that. But. Yeah, no, that that definitely has a comedic slash gruesome kind of. I mean, well, I've always a- I've always found their music to be pretty funny, actually. You know, when I was a kid and I listened to it, one of the reasons I liked it was that it has all these weird sciencey space noises in it. Yeah, there's so, a lot of that. Yeah. Right? So when you're yeah. when you're eight and you're listening to it, that's enough. Yeah. It's like Disney music. And it's you different know? from yeah. all the other music that's been was at that era yeah. going on. It, a lot of it, yeah. yeah. I do wonder how whether they listen to Kraftwerk because their first record came out in '78, and mm-hmm. I think Kraftwerk's first record also came out in '78, which was. Um, Oh, the computer one. Yeah, Audubon? Nope. No. It was not Audubon. No. That was like two or three. Oh, is it? Um, yeah. oh, it's going to make me crazy. Uh, yeah, but that record is so cool. It's got all these weird noises in it. I, I that think... they made none of them. They right. built all the machines that made all those noises. <laughs> I think there's a little bit less of that kind of sound in their record, their first album, but I think if it influenced them, it would have been... Mm. It was more like... Maybe later. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely Panorama shows a lot of that kind of sound, I think. Heartbeat City has a lot of it in it, yeah. too. I don't know. There, there were several times I, I wondered about their influences. Like, well, to dial it back a moment, the uh, Okasik and Orr had actually been recording, or not necessarily recording, but together playing since 1965. 
actually they were contemporaries of like the Beatles and the Stones huh. and stuff. But it's about a dozen years before they recorded. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, but they didn't have any like widespread success that way. They I think they were more mm-hmm. like regional like clubs playing local clubs and stuff. And they had a duo, and then they had this other band. And, and well, were they playing in a, a very same band most of that time? Or I think they that that... they started together for a while. They went maybe separated. There's like a one one together. was called Milkwood. Oh yeah, yeah. No, that one they were both in, I think. Yeah. yeah. So maybe, you, maybe they were together throughout this, and I think I think the Cars was kind of like a, a very conscious decision to mm-hmm. try to make a real shot, take a shot at the at, at the big time. I mean, they were doing like kind of this acoustic stuff before that, and and they probably had some idea that it wasn't going to be like you know, massively well, popular. But who knows? I mean, I mean, I feel like if you read a description of that early music. It sounds like it's not going to be good. Yeah, they they were I, in this band that was a Crosby, Stills and Nash yeah, style yeah. folk rock band. I, I listened to called one or Milkwood, two. and the album they made was "How's the Weather." Yeah, like every part of that is like, yeah. meh. I, I I found a couple. <laughs> I found a couple of those songs online, and I tried listening to them, and they were not particularly interesting. You could yeah. hear Okasik's voice, but uh-huh. he was doing these folky songs, and it just sounded strange. It was like he was pretending to be doing this because you're just so used to him being like right. this, like very um, sarcastic. It definitely kind did. Of thing. He, the and, singing and, does sound both him and, yeah. and Benjamin Orr when they sing yeah. sounds like sarcastic. It's got almost that Sex Pistol style right. like it's fake, very detached nature to mm-hmm. their singing. You know, they don't. Mm-hmm. They, they're definitely not. They don't connect much like emotionally. Mm-hmm. And that's not what the cars are there for, I think. <laughs> oh, I, I actually yeah. disagree with you on that one, but we can talk about there, there that. There are a few times I, when they can, do. We can get into it like the, in, yeah. on a song basis. Yeah. There are a few times basis. that they do. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm not saying they never do. But. Mm-hmm. Well, what really struck me about their voices is they, they certainly so much more affected, or maybe not affected, that's their natural voice, perhaps. No, but, I uh, think you're right. I think it does sound affected. They, 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 so they deliberate, like, I'm doing a especially thing with okay, my voice. Especially, especially like okay, this, okay, And this is my music, and this is how I'm going to sing, and this is how I'm going to be different. Yeah. And, and they 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 accentuate that, mm-hmm. right? I think okay, six specifically, yeah. But uh, or to some extent too, he's like a little bit like trying to be like. I don't think Elvis it's any coincidence that they sound but... similar. Hmm? I don't think it's any coincidence that they sound similar. You know, they're they're both capitalizing on that to sound each other. Yeah. You know, I mean, I don't even conscious know. or not. Can I? I don't even know if I could pick out which song is sung by who. I struggle with it. Just so yeah. happens I went I, through good. the first three oh, albums. Did you? Where's my Excel sheet, Dave, so I could see? <laughs> yeah, right. I, if I can't see it in front um, of me, I don't believe that you did it. They they actually about it's about half and half on most of the first three albums. Interesting. Uh, so Lennon McCartney of them. Yeah, except that Okasik okay, writes everything. Right, 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 right. So he just decided. I don't know if he decided like, oh, here this one I'm. I wrote for you to sing, Ben. And I, I don't know. Maybe they test them out and, and tested them out and just see who sounds better. But mm. um, You're on a first name basis with him? Ben? I yeah. know, right? Did you ben notice that? He shorted it. I did it about the drummer earlier. I was like, Dave Robinson. No, that's not his name. I'm not going to keep saying Ben Orr. Ben Orr. Ben Orr. Like, you know, come on. <laughs> what else do I say? Orr? Yeah. Well, yeah, that's confusing. You're right. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so Rick, Rick has that more quavery kind of like kind of warbly voice and, and mm. that's definitely seems affected to me like mm. a doubt he had to sing that way right right i mean i, I bet he had a, the ability to sing more smoothly but it's kind of this nervous kind of sounding thing and i think that may have been intentional for his lyrics just mm. to fit the songs better mm-hmm. but like for example uh ben sang um uh just what i needed mm-hmm. uh bye bye love movie mm. in stereo mm-hmm. all mixed up mm. And then you have Rick singing with the good times roll, best friends girl, don't you stop, which I love mm-hmm. the the use of cha in the title for mm-hmm. that one. Don't cha stop. Mm-hmm. I've always appreciated that. Mm. I, you know, I, I was going to mention before when you were talking about like your history of the band, I, mm. I, I was living in Massachusetts when they first oh. came out. And oh, right. So they're they, from Boston. Yeah. They're from Boston and they got a lot of play on WBCN, the local, the big local like alternative kind of station apparently and from what i what i understand the uh they gave them a lot of exposure locally and then it sort of took off elsewhere they somehow got picked up elsewhere and it really um exploded but they i guess they played some demos first that had a different sound but then even before the album came out i was not listening at that time but mm-hmm. then when the uh, the first album came out it was just all over the radio mm. in new england and i'm sure it can't speak for anywhere else, but mm-hmm. everybody in my high school was listening to it. It was just the big album. 
Uh, was there a certain amount of pride because they're local? I think so, yeah. yeah. No, there definitely was. I just remember all these people with the Boston accents, like, talking about the cars. You know? <laughs> 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 you know? and, uh, <laughs> oh, no. I didn't I even the put cars. that together. Yeah. Oh, that's the worst. <laughs> yep, yep. Oh, no. Exactly. Um, <laughs> I did not have one at the time because we had just moved there a couple right. of years before, you know, as far as I know. So, you know, I had the cassette from my brother, but he, so my brother is like music snob from way back. Like from, I don't understand how, well, I guess if you're, you know, eight and your dad takes you to see Queen live, you're going to have some pretty particular ideas about what music is good and what isn't. Mm -hmm. So we had this Cars cassette around that was his that I used to listen to, or we used to listen to in the car. But I always had this impression from him that he thought they were a joke band. He deliberately gave me that impression. He's the one that I heard the rumor from that Okazik himself said that the band was a joke and that he was just using it to try to deliberately sell out and that he hated the band. And I did, I looked all over the internet and tried to find proof that he ever said that and I can't find anything. Think, yeah. So it sounds like a, like a, a rumor that my brother, mm -hmm. my brother periodically would lie to me about music. Or yeah. like shatter my illusions of it. Like he told me all this nasty stuff about the Beach Boys. He's like, they're not, they can't actually surf, you know. And I was like, no, so upset. <laughs> yeah, which it's actually like, was true. Which but. is true. Yeah, he's like, they're just ho dads. They just hang out on the beach and like talk to girls and pose with surfboards. And I love the Beach Boys, and that was really upsetting. So, like, this falls in line well, if he's making this stuff up it's about the cars. You said he was a Queen fan. I mean, yeah, I think he was into them, yeah. Well, which is funny, because Roy Thomas Baker, who mm. produced Queen, mm -hmm. was the Cars producer for their first four mm, albums. No way, I didn't, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, and so cool. a lot of you, what you hear, like, there are elements uh, throughout the first album, I think I noticed it most, is where the way he took, especially, like, harmonies and did that kind of Queen thing, yeah. where it's just, like, like a very smoothed out, just lots of voices, and mm -hmm. um, I think I noticed it most on uh, All Mixed Up. Mm -hmm. especially that has a lot of that. But um, mm -hmm. so it's just interesting that he was all about queen, but mm -hmm. somehow that he, I wouldn't say he was all about queen. Well, he okay, was okay. He's difficult to pin down. Right, like okay. his, yeah. he was really into like yeah. punk and outsider type music. Oh, okay. And plus like this idea of selling out was a much bigger deal than it is now. Oh, it's not a there deal was, now at all. No, apparently. nobody cares. Like <laughs> nobody cares. it's like sell it as fast as you can and make yeah. as much money yeah. as you can. But for a long time when it came to music, there was a, a good couple of decades where the idea of selling out and authenticity of a musician and a band was like yeah. really oh, important yeah. to a lot of yeah. people. Yeah. And some fans, I think some acts even lost fans because mm -hmm. of selling if out. If they sold out. Yeah. yeah. They would get this like, oh, they're just a bunch of sellouts right. and then they would lose their original fan base. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, probably they were getting a giant new fan base. So what did they really uh, right. care about? Well, that's what that selling out to them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That perception I've heard before, even yeah. experienced that. I was kind of new to rock and roll in my 19s and, you know, 19, 20 years old, something in that area. And hearing the cars for the first time, they did sound so different. It did mm -hmm. sound like, you know, because Rick Ocasek makes his voice different, it mm -hmm. sounds like he's attempting to be somebody he isn't. It sounds uh -huh. unauthentic. Mm. And and that perception is that it was making himself somebody he isn't and right. selling out. Right. And, so, and then on top of it, when you have a lot of music that's got synthesizers in it that are like yeah, kind of yeah, electronic kind of quote unquote fake, fake noises, yeah. right? Then all that works together to make it sound like some kind of weird. Yeah. And, the, and, and with the album covers being so heavily stylized, you know, like yeah. it's not like yeah. a cool rock band that's like in an alley posing with a bunch of graffiti. Like instead, it's these very polished images yeah. of like mm -hmm. supermodels or whatever. So this is, a, it's a very artificial, there's a lot of artificiality, right? In, right. in what they make, right. except somehow it comes together to make this it amazing really fucking badass thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, stuff. the yeah. interesting, I mean, as far as like selling out, like, you know, it's, it's hard to sell out if you haven't like started out at some point where you weren't selling out, you know I mean? But they were just, they hit the scene and went mega popular instantly. Yeah, so it's, it's true. Well, hard to, they were, hmm. they were commercial. Yes. But. I don't think well, well, ever... a listener may not know that history, though. But uh, yeah, I mean, to accuse anybody of selling out, they would have had to have some idea, I think, of where they were. Right, they earlier, had to have been doing some something else, right? And then right. changed it so, aggressively to become. Yeah, I don't think the cars ever got accused of selling out because I think they were certainly accused of maybe being too commercial, too polished, or whatever. That's some, by mm -hmm. some people, you know. Mm -hmm. Their their first album, I, I looked up where it hit the charts, and it it went up to number eighteen, which is mm -hmm. surprising. I didn't. Not that it went that high, but that it didn't go higher. I, I mm. thought it was just based on what I remember from Airplay and so on. Mm -hmm. um, but it did sell a million copies over the course of the one year. From, since it was that's released. a lot of that, records. That, that is a lot. Mm -hmm. so, For 1978? Yeah. 
78 to 79, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they won um, Best New Artist in a Rolling Stone That's poll. That's not surprising. Hmm. Yeah. In 1978, yeah. yeah. The, the biggest hit off of that one was uh, Just What I Needed. Mm-hmm. Again, Which this is... Just... listen to. Oh, yeah. yeah. Music. Yeah, look yeah. at that. Music. Uh, listen to this stuff. It only stuff went to number 27, about. apparently. Which, but that was the biggest hit off the. Although Best Friends Girl went to number mm, three mm-hmm, in the UK, mm-hmm. so they were also doing extremely well elsewhere. All right, so uh, yeah, let's get a little music going here. Oh, and the clapping! I love the clapping. I'm going to talk about clapping in a minute. I love the clapping. I have a theory about I have clapping. Some on very interesting thing to add to this song too, and you will be the judge of how interesting oh, it is. This is very interesting. <laughs> Yeah, that clapping definitely makes the song. Mm-hmm. Whenever I listen to this when I'm cleaning the house, I always clap when I'm walking around the house. <laughs> and that guitar is so rockabilly. Yeah. That's the thing about the song. It's like such a great blend of 50s, 60s, 70s. It's like like that synth in there, but it's also got that rockabilly mm-hmm. and it's... Get all these influences going on. Yeah, just this morning I was listening to it and trying to figure out the, the strumming pattern. Yeah, on yeah. Girl. And the, their music is so fun to sing along with, oh, right? Because there's like that, yeah. little bit harmony parts. You can just yeah. come in like, nah, nah. you know, like you don't have to sing the main part. It's really fun. Yeah. It's really joyful. Yeah, that's yeah, good. Yeah. I, th- I, I think this was always my favorite song on the album. Uh, or at least... The ones that were getting airplay. Yeah. This album of, of the ones that we listened to, this is easily my favorite. Of oh, really? Of them, yeah. Mm. Yeah. I, I, I agree. I, that's it's yeah. still my favorite. I mean, it's yeah, it's it's got so many good songs on it. It's like so it, many good songs. it opens with "Good Times Roll," "My Best Friend's Girl," just and what "Just I, What I Need," which like one, two, three, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Can't say definitively, but probably it's one of the top, one of the best debut albums ever. I mean, yeah. there's very few acts yeah. that had such a strong right. album as their first album, and because the, the, every song on there could yes. theoretically have been a hit on the yeah, radio. And, and I and I think the ones that you might for me, I find when I listen to this record, the songs on it that I would want to say are weaker are actually not at all they're great no, songs just by they, comparison yeah they're right. just <laughs> next to ones That's that are right. so good yeah, that yeah, you're yeah, like yeah. oh this one but then yeah. you listen to it by itself and you're like oh, yeah. those are great yeah. my favorite song on this record is moving in stereo i was just gonna That's say cool. that too. it yeah. is just like really one like of the most song. epic rock songs ever 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 <laughs> dave did you need to say your interesting I, thing to I, us? I still need to say my interesting <laughs> thing. okay we're okay. listening to your okay. interesting thing okay i'm gonna go back to this for a second um so I, what I want you to listen to is this guitar part here, right here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's super rockabilly. Okay. It's not just rockabilly. That is right. a direct lift from a Beatles song. Wait, I want to guess. Okay. Oh, but I won't be able to. Well, when I first was I trying to think, okay, this sounds like something the Beatles did. and One of their earlier songs. From, is it from Let It Be? Not uh, the not the re- the song the record because that record is their most no. kind of like bluesy guitar. No, it's from uh, the White Album actually. Oh, I hate myself for not knowing right away what this is, <laughs> but I have too much Cars music in my head. I can't. Wow. Exactly. Nice. I note, note for note. Bumps. Note for that note. That was great. It was surprising to me just how... I, I thought that, that that solo or whatever you want to call it was heavily influenced by a Beatles song, but I mm. didn't realize it was note for note. Kind of shocking because I Will doesn't sound... It's such a quiet song. Mm-hmm. And then you have My Best Friend's Girl. But if that that, that little bit mm. fits so well into mm-hmm. both of them. And mm-hmm. Okay, so we you wanted to talk about I want to talk movie about, and stereo. Oh, oh, before. Can I talk oh, about sure. clapping in records and my First. theory about oh, yeah, this? Yeah. Have I told you guys Please. about this before? Please do. No. So Please. I have this I have this personal theory, and I really want to hear if anybody can disprove <clears throat> it, because I haven't had anybody say it yet. I think any record that includes clapping sounds is awesome. <laughs> All right. That's it. That's my idea. Wow. Does that apply to podcasts? Maybe we should... <laughs> no, music. <laughs> music. But I think when they use claps as percussion... Um, do you like Oh, he said don't, don't bring me down by ELO? Probably. I do like Electric Light Orchestra cuz they do this. It's a very very rapid clapping at one point. Does it sound cool? 
Not really. I mean, it's it, <laughs> it's, it's definitely. <laughs> Let's check it out. I'm going to make a note of it for later. It's somewhere in there. What's the song called? Don't bring me down. Okay. Yeah. Don't bring me down. Is that how the song goes? Yes, he nailed it. Don't bring me down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you'll recognize. Probably. A lot of their songs are like that. Yeah. But anyway. yeah, clapping. I did clapping. Yeah. And, and the it, song it, that you're talking about, I mm-hmm. made the same note on this guy. Mm-hmm. The Beatles yeah. have done that. They've mm-hmm. used it in a few songs. And it definitely, it, it livens things Oh, are you trying to say it, the Beatles are good or something? Uh, it definitely adds something. Do you think it's something it, energetic? Something humanizes it almost? Also that, yeah. I, I could participate if yeah. I want to. Yeah. Which I think for the yeah. Cars is a pretty important thing because some of their songs oh, don't yeah. sound very human. Oh, because they're so synthy and they yeah. have so many weird noises in them. Yeah. I mean, I think it's cool in a lot of cases. Occasionally yeah. it works against them, I think. So we can talk about moving in stereo? Yes. The yes, please. raddest fucking song ever, because yeah, it starts with the UFO it. space sound. This is also the soundtrack to the famous scene in Fast Times at Ridgemont yes, High with true. Phoebe Cates right. coming out of the pool in a red bikini, uh, bathing suit. This song is amazing. In years, but... And it goes left to right in your headphones yes, while you're listening does. to it, which is mind-blowing. Yeah. So when when I was when this came out, I was in junior high, and like all my friends who are into typically into really hard rock kind of bands and stuff, they love the Cars, and like the synth parts of the Cars never bothered them at all. I think there's there's enough cool guitar stuff going on. Oh there yeah, that they they were so into it. I mean, even this like just that. That's a pretty. Cool. And this is all this amazing shit just happened in the song before yeah. even the main hook comes right. in. It gets stuck in your head forever, and you're so happy about it. It's, almost, it's like they build up to the crescendo of the song early. Mm-hmm. You get to enjoy it the rest of the time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But then there's that other part where it goes bum 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 bum. One of the things that I disliked about some of the car songs is they seem so formula. Like let's later, say, that's, that's a, later, I think that's definitely true. Perhaps, perhaps, perhaps. Uh, I mean, for me, uh, and, and that's one of the things that I, I like about this song. It's just like yeah. this is out of somebody's oh, heart, yeah. man. This is really lovely. This is pretty experimental, I would say. And the idea that you would put this on a, an album that you are really trying to break through with, it's very, uh, I mean, clearly he was still maintaining an artistic integrity, you know, and he wasn't completely yeah. like yeah, good polishing point. up just to be, you know, hit the mainstream. And there's something so restrained about this song, despite the fact that it's like mm-hmm. got oh, such yeah. driving rhythm what? and such like amazing drama to it. It's also very like it feels very upright and like yeah, yeah. It's like a little robotic, but it's still like Slightly, it's yeah. so badass. Well, there's a there's a tension to it, sort of yeah. like like that's, like, yeah, like the Led Zeppelin song "Cashmere," same kind mm-hmm. of thing where it's just like this this very restrained kind of beat, but it's something that's Pushing, it's yeah, holding, re- holding something back. Word. Yeah, yeah. It's like it yeah. wants to explode, but mm-hmm. yeah. but it doesn't yeah. ever quite. Well, there is that one point. Yeah, well, later it does it briefly, like the boom, 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 mm-hmm. boom, 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 mm-hmm. boom, yeah, boom, towards boom, the end, boom, boom, totally. Yeah. One thing I wanted to talk about now. I mean, it's right from the very beginning. Is OK Six lyrics? They're so weird sometimes. They're very surreal. There are times when I think, wow, that sound has a really cool set of lyrics combined with that particular music at that part. But then there are other times where it really annoys me. It's like, oh yeah, he. If you look, read his lyrics, I mean, did you mm. guys on some of them? Go, yeah. Well, what's it, what's it about them that bothers you? They don't mean anything. Uh, some of them are completely impenetrable. Like like, or it's it's more like he was just throwing vocabulary out there that sounded good with the song. But what the hell does that mean? I don't know. Mm. But sometimes it's cool. Sometimes it really works. Like one of my one of my favorite. Sets of lyrics is from my best friend's girl. Getting back to that again, mm-hmm. uh, you're always dancing down the street mm-hmm. with your suede blue suede eyes. Suede blue eyes is really good. Which 
I love that. And that's actually another Carl Perkins reference because he wrote that song. So totally. The hmm. Blue, Blue, Blue Suede Shoes. shoes. Yeah. And that's, again, that guitar part and everything. There's a whole tie in there. And then you've got your nuclear boots and your drip dry gloves. But when you bite your lip, it's some reaction to love. Mm-hmm. And I think that's really cool. I have no idea what it really means. What are Which nu- part? What are nuclear boots? They're just badass boots. What are drip dry gloves? What, come on. I mean, I don't know. It, 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 it's not. I actually like. Those are the ones I like. Those are oh. the lyrics. That's an example oh, I see. I like. Which ones don't you like? Uh, oh, I'm in touch with your world has some really yeah. ridiculous They're lyrics. Pretty amazing. Um, I'm a psilocybin pony. You're a flick fandango phony. He uses the word fandango more than Does once he? in there. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah, um, it's in. Uh, it's in. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I actually like that set of lyrics, but the rest of the song is like, what the hell? You gotta allow them in some artistic license, man. Oh sure. No, you're welcome <laughs> yeah, to. Man. But but when your songs don't mostly mean anything it starts well, to get a little let, annoying let, uh, let's I, come back to the point that he kind of uses an affected voice and maybe he just wants these different sounds i mean well i think that's what it is i i don't it, it just feels like he's just vomiting words on the page that yeah, happen but to they, sound but, good but and, yeah the nico case does that too sometimes uh, it's just about inflection and rhyme and like his his rarely have an emotional connection at all um, that's what rarely i, I don't rarely, know rarely and they, but they bother to put the words on, they put the lyrics in every sure. one of their records, which I think was a thing that people would do more often, yeah. you know, in the vinyl era. Mm-hmm. When there was space to do it. Well, yeah, yeah that yeah. too. Yeah. CDs would do it too a lot it's in the little, beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, tiny, 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 yeah, tiny, tiny, tiny font. Yeah, it's like six really point font. Everyone can read this. It's fine. But, you know, to me, like good music lyrics, the best ones, I think, in a lot of ways are vague. There's a couple of things why that works. One is that you can assign your own meaning to it very easily. Because sure. it's vague, so you can make up your own story without even realizing you'll do that. And then it, for you, it seems meaningful, and it seems like it's a personal thing. Yeah. It's also more fun to sing along with, in some ways, if you're not singing a story or about specifics. And maybe you each line to. could be taken on its right. own as like kind of a, maybe it means something, maybe it doesn't, I don't know, that doesn't bother me at all. It's not like yeah. you're committing to some particular meaning that everybody will... Yeah. yeah, and I mean, if you read like any of the, or listen to Guided by Voices, their lyrics sure. are straight nonsense. Yeah, no, I, I, just word salad. They certainly aren't the only band that does this. Yeah. I mean, that's certain. You know, well, it, how often is it that even if there are lyrics that when you're singing along with a song, you don't know and you just sing along with it? You don't know. The, yeah. yeah. Well, there's that yeah. too. Well, and and that comes up a lot with the cars, I think, because I'm sure. there are words that you would never imagine that they would use. So it sounds like something else, mm-hmm. and it's just yeah. I mean, I definitely agree that. It's good to have some degree of like you know vagueness, unless you're telling a very specific story in your song, and yeah. then it's a whole different kind of thing, you know. But I, I almost had the feeling like I, I don't even think he had anything in mind, and, and, and it doesn't bother me if I'm not thinking too hard about it mm-hmm. with car songs. Yeah. But when I really pay attention to the lyrics when I was reading them, it was just it's like oh, that's so frustrating. It's like, mm. <laughs> I don't know. That's totally not my experience. Just times, yeah. yeah. I, 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 I sing with the lyrics, I listen to the lyrics, I read the lyrics, and there's some, I, yeah, there's a couple lines every here and there that seem completely nonsensical, yeah. but it's more like reading a poem where to me it feels like there exactly. is a deliberate intention. Yeah. It feels like there's a theme and an intent and a, and it's getting at something. And, and it's like, to me, it's like reading Nico Case lyrics where you'll have like two or three lines that work together that tell a little mini story of a feeling or a moment. And then they, and then she just kind of abandons it and goes on to well, something else because it fits into the structure of the song in a different way. Yeah. I think you're on something there because mm-hmm. he does that a lot. I think where mm-hmm. he's like a couplet or something, like a couple mm-hmm. lines that sound awesome together and mm-hmm. together, different mm-hmm. alone. They tell need something. Tell a little thing. Sure. Mm-hmm. And then it but kind then of s- spirals in, away to In the context else. of the rest of the yeah. song, it's not like there's no overall overarching meaning to it. But yeah, I mean, it, taken like that, it's it's probably better to think of it that way really but there are some songs where he not only didn't mean anything but the lyrics were just bad there were a few <laughs> not, not on this album not on this album and i don't even think on candio but later a couple later albums where mm-hmm. he was just like eh, geez i don't know it's like, <laughs> uh, i'll get to those later yeah but, well, well yeah but uh having said that i mean I, I think there are times when the lyric the lyrics and the music together just work fantastically any uh, others on this album that we're talking about stand out for you in general or lyrically? We, uh, uh, in general. How about you? What, 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 are, what are some of your... Oh, well, we, we hit Moving the Stereo. That was a, mm. that was yeah. a, I zeroed in on that, baby. It was, mm-hmm. That's a great song. Oh, <laughs> that had a funny line that I, I made note of. Uh, Life's the same except for my shoes. Uh-huh. That, what does that mean? I love it. That, one, it that one has always stood out for me. Yeah, me too. Like, like that pops out of the song yeah. for some reason. Well, because it... I mean, maybe that's what's great about it. Right. Is that it yeah. is ridiculous. Yeah. 
Because I also think... Well, well that my, one shows a sense of humor, definitely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah, good point. Yeah. My impression of Ocasek is always that, like, there's, like, a joke. This whole... Yes. The, yeah, yeah. There's a sense that all of it is just hmm. kind of he's making fun of it as he's doing it. I really like also, uh, lyrically, speaking yeah. of, uh, You're All I've Got Tonight, because it it's like this funny double situation where, like, it sounds kind of romantic, You're All I've Got Tonight, I Need You Tonight, but it also is this, like, kind of pathetic... Like, you're all I've got tonight. Like, it's... <laughs> really? Yeah. Do you don't have anything else going on? Like, then uh, you're kind of... I mean, you're into me, but you're a loser. Kind of like... It's a funny kind of love song in that way. And, and that, that's a great one, too. I, I, I love... I mean, musically speaking, mm-hmm. I love that. Because the, the, the blend of guitar and synthesizer on that mm-hmm. one, too, is really, really... Yeah, I, I made a note here also that, that that song, it stuck out to me in that it was one of the few songs that I listened to of these guys that has a, a particularly long guitar riff in there. I mean, mm-hmm. they take off for a little while in that. He, he, uh, Elliot Easton is very concise with his playing most of the time. Like his solos are very tight and together and, and, and frequently rehearsed. I mean, he, he doesn't completely improvise them. Mm-hmm. Here, let's, uh, let's play a little bit of that one there. Yes, it's airplane sound. I love sound. The, the phasing uh-huh. sound. It sounds like an airplane flying overhead, yeah. right? That's a phase shift effect. And there's this like yeah. thing that comes in. It's really cool. This is why I, I love his vocals on this one. Mm-hmm. It'd be kind of fun to try and mimic that. Some good backups in this one too. Yeah. And that is such a synthy synth, mm-hmm. but it's it works so well against synthy the, synth. Yeah, you know, it's like it works so well against those like rock and guitars. We did, did that really well. What one thing I, I was reading, uh, I read this interview with David Robinson, mm. who was formerly the drummer for the Modern Lovers, Jonathan Richmond, mm-hmm. Modern Lovers, and um, which is where Jerry Harrison of the Talking Heads also came from. They were in the band, band together. This interview happened after Heartbeat City. He expressed some dissatisfaction with the amount of freedom he was given as a drummer on their stuff. Because Rick Ocasek would often, I mean, his his demos were very fully formed a lot of the times. And uh, he had these pretty good drum machines and things he would use. And and so it was there wasn't a lot of room for... David Robinson to uh, so he had a very specific really sound he was looking for. Yeah, and he well apparently he's he's a very kind of straightforward drummer. He considered that that's how he described himself. According so just to their simple. first review in the New York Times, solid metronomic wooden faced percussionist like yeah. Ringo Starr. <laughs> well, he, yeah, it's and very metronomic because it's just like mm-hmm. especially uh, some of the later albums, it's like there's just this one beat that goes through the whole song. And but he said he felt kind of hemmed in. A lot of times, and especially when they did Heartbeat City, apparently mm. the producer Mutt, Mutt Lang, mm. who also did ACDC, ACDC yeah. he he was really unwilling to work with David Robinson as far as like allowing him to like have some free reign. He like very specific ideas. He made him do this stuff, so he was pretty unhappy about that whole recording process. Uh, anyway, but his his drumming throughout these is just such a, hmm. a great timekeeper, and there's not a lot of like crazy fills or anything like that. It's just like. Like very, which works really well for her. I dig it a lot. A lot of the stuff, yeah. I mean, it, it definitely it fits the car sound. You know, mm-hmm. you wouldn't, you could never have Keith Moon drumming for the cars. Mm-hmm. You know, that would just be well. I idea. mean, I think that also you kind of need that simplification as a foil to all the synth stuff that happens. You know, you can't have everything right. be crazy and weird. Yeah, you need like some of it to be, which I think is also why it's good. The guitar is really restrained too. Because it's like the synth is the place yeah. for them to do the weird shit. Little squiggly yeah. thing. Yeah. Squiggly and, bits. and their voice. Their vocals, yeah, and the though. vocals, right? Yeah. And then yeah. the guitar and the bass and the yeah. drums are all pretty, pretty, pretty sparse. Tight. Yeah, yeah. Which is my favorite style of music. It's mainly, mainly Rick Ocasek had this image, I think, of how he just... I think everything... All, all the, inst- all the uh, musicians contributed stuff in, as far as how things sounded, but it all had to fit into this kind of template that he had in his mm-hmm, mind. Mm-hmm. Well, it sounded like yeah, they got yeah. together a lot before they decided what songs to put on an album and collaborated, and everybody had a, an opportunity right. to partic- participate in the conversation. Yeah, apparently that was true, especially on the first 
yeah. three albums, and maybe Ocasek seemed to take a stronger hand as things went on. Yeah. Hmm. They recorded this record in 12 days. Is that's that right? Amazing. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Isn't actually. that great? <laughs> Especially because it's a pretty produced album. I mm. mean, those kinds of albums, usually you think of those as taking longer mm-hmm. to right. like get, get right. But. The other thing I, I, rem- I realized as we're talking, too, is that I can't think of one person I've talked to and mentioned this band that doesn't like it. Interesting point, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Different degrees of it. I mean, I think sure. everybody has a few songs that they like. At right. Least, you know, like like, like, yeah, like so every much. person I've brought yeah. them up to immediately is like, oh, yeah, they're cool. Like, yeah. just yeah. unreservedly. Yeah, maybe they have favorite songs or how right. much do they know of them. But right. yeah. huh. Which is interesting because they also don't have an impression to me like someone like Springsteen or someone like The Who or someone like The Beatles. It's like ubiquitously amazing. Yet they still have this... This appeal, yeah. Everyone's like, oh, yeah, those guys. Those guys are great. And I, I think it might come back, you know, thinking about your point just then, is their distinction, their uniqueness with their synthesizers. Mm. Not that many bands got red, regular radio play mm-hmm. with rock and roll that s- sounded anything like them. So they mm. kind of stu- stu- stood out. Mm-hmm. And they were just damn good. So mm-hmm. it's, it does, I guess it really shouldn't surprise us that everybody likes them, but it is mm-hmm. kind of an interesting observation. Yeah. Well, they also didn't, I don't know that how effective their touring was because they weren't great live, self-admittedly. Hmm. But their thing that they really got popular with was their videos. Yes. That was are. a huge part of becoming like a, you know, well-known. They won the best music video of the mm. year at the very first MTV right. Video Music Awards cool, awesome. show in 1984 for... Um, uh, uh, Magic or uh, no, no, no. From um, oh my gosh, you might think. Yeah, think. from you might think from yeah, Heartbeat yeah, City. Yeah. Well, they, they their timing was perfect with, with MTV. MTV the, oh, the sure, rise yeah, of MTV yeah, they came and they at were the right there time. And, yeah, but they also there. did shit that was really inventive of yeah, the, at the yeah, time. Like yeah. you, you know, that video you might think is bizarro and goofy as <laughs> it's shit. Really goofy. Yeah, like Rick Ocasek's face on a fly. <laughs> Right. You know, oh, like it's yeah, this, it's this whole right. Yeah. Like we yeah. all know this. Yeah. It's this whole thing about the girl where he's like obsessed with her and he shows up all the time. Like he shows up, she opens her lipstick and he comes out <laughs> of the lipstick too. <laughs> right. She's in the bathroom. You know, she opens the medicine yeah. cabinet and the band is in there next to her deodorant, right. like playing I their instruments. These yeah. were it's, all these groundbreaking effects at the time. Well, yeah, because it was like, one of the first were, videos that used computer animation. Right. Exactly. Yeah. But it's yeah. the goofiest shit, and yeah. they're silly looking. You know, yeah, and yeah. they make no attempt to like not be goofy looking. Right. So it's amazing that you're right. Yeah, they their timing was excellent, but they were also not doing anything to try to be, you know, like other people or be appealing. Right. They right. were just being goofy and well, weird. Well, in preparation for this, I, I was going to go back and watch about the YouTube videos of the old MTV yeah. cars videos. Yeah. And I got through two or three of them. And I couldn't look at them anymore. I couldn't no? stand it. Why not? <laughs> You know, it, it, it's that kind of cheesy '80s big hair look that oh yeah, I, super I, I, cheesy. Just, yeah, it, yeah just wore out on me fast. <laughs> I, I think it's good that they didn't really have videos for the first two or three albums because uh, they might have had a negative yeah. effect. I don't know. I mean, I definitely understand what you're saying too. I mean, and, and to that point, there, there's that one album, is Heartbeat City, perhaps that we were listening to or Shake It Up. Mm, man, I, there's a few songs on there I just I couldn't take anymore. I'd heard them huh. too many times. Oh, too many times. Yeah. Well, well, well we're, we're just talking videos, right? Let's let's, let's, let's save right. that for because uh, <laughs> I have a lot to say about that too. About what? About Heartbeat, Heartbeat City. City yeah. I know you didn't even want to listen to it for this. No, I didn't. I had but... to twist your. No, arm. actually, yeah. why? It's yeah. like my favorite. It's okay. so good. There's so many good songs on it. Okay. Um, oh, so <laughs> damn! Did so you hear that gentle okay. I know what that okay means. I, I wanted to uh, that's talk the, about one that's more. That's the you think that if you want, but I'm going to unload on you later about why you're wrong. <laughs> so, I heard that okay, Dave. That's fine. Oh well, I don't know if I meant all that, but oh, you did. so anyway, I heard that tone. I heard that tone. <laughs> so I was going to talk about bye bye love on here too before we move yeah, on. Yeah, that was good too. This may be. I, it's funny, like every song on here, as I'm listening to, it, I think maybe this is my favorite song on the record. Yeah. Uh-huh. And maybe this uh-huh. one is, you know. But I think "Bye Bye Love" might actually be my really favorite wow. song on the album. Really? Because it's got probably my favorite Cars lyrics of any Cars song. Uh, I'll just read the section that I particularly love, and then we'll listen to it a little bit. Uh, Substitution, mass confusion, clouds inside your head, involving all my energies until you visit Ted. We're fogging all my energies. Hmm? No. 
Is that what Oh, you, I'm sorry. Are you disagreeing oh, with are the you liner anything? notes of the vinyl record? I'm sure you're right, Dave. <laughs> Well, okay. That's the if we could yeah. look at your face right I'm, now, <laughs> you're, you're self satisfied. I'm not rolling my eyes. Um, no, wait, wait. So, <laughs> substitution, mass confusion, clouds inside my head, fogging, were fogging oh, you all know my what? energies. I used to think that's what it was, and then I thought, then I thought I was corrected somewhere along the line. Okay. Do you want a pen? I still like it. <laughs> uh, no, it's okay. <laughs> I've got a with red your pen. eyes I can make of some porcelain. Notes on your- with your eyes of porcelain and of blue, they shock me into sense. You think you're so illustrious, you call yourself intense. So anyway, oh, yeah, those, those are like... you think you're so illustrious, you, call you just call yourself intense. Yeah, yeah. Th- those, so I, like, those are my favorite lyrics. And not, not just because they're cool lyrics, but also they work so well in the, mm. this context of the song. So mm-hmm. Let's see. Mm-hmm. And it's such a great song anyway. And those little chiming guitars amidst mm-hmm. the distorted, it's just it's so, so cool. Oh, and I have a note here that it has the best synth solo ever. I wrote that down anyway. I don't know. If that's, I don't know if I'd always say that, but at that moment that I was listening to it, I was thinking, man, this is such a good synth solo. I don't usually like synth solos. But. I was kind of disappointed to hear the song is Bye Bye Love. I was saying My My Love. Aww. Wow. Yeah. It's interesting. I always thought that was Orange Aid Sky. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought he would say Just a Fucking Lullaby <laughs> when I first... <laughs> they don't swear in their songs. No, they don't. Yeah, yeah. Um, here comes the substitution mass confusion mm-hmm. thing. Okay. Oh, he says your head, and the liner says my head. Mm. <gasps> he does say involving. He does. That's crazy that it that it's wow. printed differently. I, I thought so. I mean, because yeah. I. I think I wrote that down as I was listening to it. I said, oh, he's definitely saying, well, but it didn't really, I didn't think that much about it. But. I love that how you call yourself intense is clearly meant to be an insult. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, good. Yeah. It's a We're coming up to the solo. I'm going to let the solo play and then stop it. Bye, bye, love. Bye, bye, love. Yeah. 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 It's yeah, pretty badass. Very cool. And and then when, then he comes in so aggressively on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think we're agreed. This record yes, is this record rocks. Awesome. This one, this one's great. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's this is a so great album. good. Yeah. And, and like you were saying, even the songs that I like least on here yeah. are still pretty freaking awesome. They're songs. great. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. only because they are next to other mm-hmm. ones that are so immediately, easily, like, badass that... It takes, yeah, because I, when you brought up Bye Bye Love, I was like, man, that song, whatever. Same thing, though, but then we're listening to that bit of it, and I'm like, man, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. this is a great fucking song. Yeah, yeah. and that happened over and over for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One, one of the things I liked about it is the way it ends right there, you know, a moving in stereo, we all just agreed mm-hmm. with it pretty much, and then it moves into All Mixed Up, mm-hmm. and that's such a great, just mellow, mm-hmm. easy now song. It was a great choice. Yeah, it's a good one, and it's, I like to think about the... A B sides of it too. The side mm-hmm. A like starts out with those three <laughs> like real heavy mm-hmm. hitters, good times roll my best friend's girl, just what I needed. And then it gets a little quieter at the end. And then I love how moving in stereo is like the third song on the second side. Cause I feel like the B side was a lot of ways where bands would put like to me it's usually my favorite song of the record. Mm-hmm. And it's usually buried. Yeah. It's either two or three. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. So then Candio came out the next yeah. year. Yeah. Like barely even a year later. Wow. Yeah. That's fast. Yeah. Actually, yeah, the first four albums were 
year, year, you know, 78, 79, That's like 80, Beatles 81. style shit right yeah, there. You yeah. know, they're treating it like they're a job. Yeah, they're cranking it out. I think Candy O is very close to the quality of mm-hmm. the first album. Yeah. Definitely has a different sound to it, mm-hmm. but but I think it's pretty consistent throughout. And, and Let's Go, I think I remember, I remember that coming out as the first single before the album came out, and that was just all over the airwaves. And that actually went to number 14, their first top 20 hit. Oh, that's the most fun song to sing ever. I can remember a friend of mine at some point, we were talking about the Cars, her being like, well, you like the nightlife, you like the Cars, you know? <laughs> the the, the, the my, my favorite lyrics, uh, I think, on the album are from that, uh, she's got wonderful eyes and a risque mouth. Mm-hmm. And when I asked her before, she said she's holding out. Mm. She's a frozen fire. She's my one desire. Mm-hmm. The risque mm-hmm. mouth. That always, that, mm-hmm. That's another one of those things that just sort of jumps out at you from the song, I think. But Yeah. My favorite is Lust for Kicks. But what, what are the lyrics on that? Um, nice? That's one of the ones I really it Or is it Double Life? Oh, yeah. No, Double Life. Maybe that's the one. I love Lust yeah. for Kicks, too, because it's got that me, 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 oh. me. There's some good bass in there also. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) No, Double Life. That's the one I love. Can we listen to that, too? Yeah. Since he controls the music. I control the music. We have to be nice to him or he won't play our favorite songs. Only his favorites. Because Double Life, I also love the end. Yeah. Hmm. This has a good atmosphere. Mm Mm-hmm. This album to me was different enough from the original one or the first one that I, I didn't like this album that much. There's one or two songs on here that I I like. Let's go, of course. Mm-hmm. But the rest of them really didn't do a whole lot for me. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting and, and wrong. What, what, <laughs> they, came, they came out so in that one, one of the ways I characterized was frenetic. Take your back you know? seat rumble. Take your front seat wife. What? It's so good. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Well, just they, they come out so fast and 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 complicated, like right off the bat, you know. And it, so the intensity of it was so strong right before, and there's no intro to a few of their songs. It kind of turned me off from them. Really, I like that actually. Yeah, I, I kind of like the way they just launch into some of these songs. And, and oh. Candy will be a, a good example. Oh, can't well. I, the I think I've talked to Sarah about this before. I'm gonna pause this, Sarah. You gonna be okay with that? No, okay, sorry. Well, we got, didn't get to the awesome, oh, like the awesome chorus in there. Go ahead, read. Oh, where it's all gonna chorus. happen to you. Oh, it's all. Uh-huh. I think I've talked to you about this before, Sarah. But the segue between Shuby Doo and Candio mm-hmm. is one of the best in all of rock history. It is one of my favorite moments in any recorded. Well, I also like really. the end of Double yeah. Life into Shuby Doo. That's a really good yeah. one too. Like the three, these three Actually, songs right. run into uh, each other in a great way. Yeah. So I, this is a record that I, um, dubbed dig- into a digital format. Mm-hmm. Like you were talking about how you did with a bunch of yours and my, um, whatever the program that I used couldn't split the songs up. Yeah. Right. Cause they run yeah. into each yeah. other. So yeah. it's like this weird, when I try to name them, there's just this like oh, just combo this and I would want to like listen to one of the songs yeah. and I couldn't forward to it because they're all just yeah. one chunk. Well, I, it, I found listening to these, these digitally, it sometimes ruined that segue for me because there is sometimes more of a pause there mm. than there's supposed mm-hmm. to be on Instead the record. Instead of it just running. Um, I'm going to play it right now and see if we can get it right here, but mm-hmm. I'm just going to skip to the end of Shooby Doo's, which is a weird song. Yeah, you can skip to the end at any time. You don't like this song? I don't care for it. Either. There's not a lot to like about the song. It's more just like a yeah, like a throwaway. It's like racket. I think it's almost there more to be a, a good. It's almost like there. A, yeah, it's just a little more to weird. be a good intro yeah. to the next song because that 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 segue is everything about this. Oh, I never realized that that weird noise they're making is the name of the song Shooby Doo. Oh. That makes me like it more. Does that change okay. your mind at all, Eric? I'll think about it. All right. Okay. Here it goes. <laughs> Everybody quiet. Yeah. It's great. Oh, it's great. I just <laughs> love that. That is like, <laughs> seriously, that is like one of the greatest moments yeah. in rock music. <laughs> it is. That, that, that transition is a band launches right in there. And if you just listen to Candio by itself, that's fine and all. But without that intro, mm-hmm. it, do, it just doesn't have this much power, I think. Yeah. My recording of it skipped on the line Ruby Rings it went Ruby Red 
Oh. And so every time I listen to it, other than my recording that I listen to forever, I'm like, oh, it's so nice to hear that whole line. <laughs> So uh, Robert Crisco had a good description of this album that I, uh, I jotted Who's down. Who's Robert Crisco? Uh, one of my favorite music critics. Is he really well known? Mm. Yeah, mm. yeah. He's um, I forget who he wrote for, but his I have several volumes of his mm. critiques and stuff. But his description of of this album was cold and thin, shiny and hypnotic. It's what they do best: rock and roll that is definitely pop without a hint of cuteness. Ooh. And like I think that. It, really, it really gets to the heart of that it, is, I think. Yeah. That's sharp. Yeah. And that's, it's so true. Like they aren't, they're never cute. They, they're never cutesy about their early. Well, they got cute later. Actually, I take that back. Heartbeat you City meant definitely that as has, a, You meant that as a, yeah. oh, we're going to have fighting with yeah. Heartbeat City, yeah, aren't maybe. we? You are super like not into it. <laughs> we'll get to that later. So <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the, this should we do itself definitely made me think of like German synth music, you know, mm. like. Craftwork or can or something like that. But I also think Night Spots uh, hinted at the the direction they were going in with uh, and on Panorama because they they did a lot more robotic sounds on that album. Mm. And let me play a little bit of it. <laughs> I can't do that keyboard sound. I just don't think that. Yeah. See, I, I, a lot of times I'm with you on that, but the, the way they blend it with the guitar, I think it, it works. I'm kind, of, I'm kind of with you on this, Eric. I, the, the songs I feel like we're playing from this are not their best representations of this record. Hmm. Well, what would you, what would you consider? Well, I think "Lust for Cakes" is so much fun to listen to. And the one right before that, I, I like also. You can't hold on too long. Yeah, yeah me too. I love that. I do yeah. like that. There's definitely a sense of humor to this song. Yeah, this song is funny. It's kind of whimsical. I always thought it was robot purse. Isn't it? She, it? Roebuck. Like Roebuck purse. That's right. That's right. right. I saw it's that. like leather, yeah. Yeah. It's not like Sears and Roebuck. Yeah. No, I think it's <laughs> Roebuck leather. It's a type of leather. Like a misplaced fix. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I like the subject of it. I picture this couple that's really cute together, that's very stylish mm-hmm. and very conscientious about how they're dressed and how they appear together in a really cute way that like I picture them getting dressed up to go out for like a night on a weekend and it's very like her being like, I think I'm gonna wear this bag and him being like, Oh, maybe the other bag and her being like, You're right, that bag and then them both being like, That's the bag. And it's really I like the, I love the idea of that kind of couple. Sure, yeah. I never got to be kind of that kind of couple until That's recently. Funny. And I love being part of that kind of couple where both of us care about what we're wearing and what the other person is wearing. Right, yeah. It's it feels real good. Oh, that's fun. Mm-hmm. It's really fun. Well, it, it, the couple in the song uh, also clearly aren't like in it for any deep reasons. No. It's lust for kicks, really. It's, yeah, uh, you know, yeah. So it's lighthearted. Like, it's, it's like, they, they're so just they're, having a good time. They right? seem like teenagers. Yeah. You yeah. know, they yeah. seem like they're exactly, young. Like, right. they're just kind of both insecure a little bit and concerned with the way they look and how they're presenting and themselves. And they may not even have that much scene. in common, you know? Yeah, they're and just, it, maybe it doesn't work out, but them. they're just posing together. But that's a kind of a fun thing, too. Yeah. And, uh, Eric, you said the, the one before that was... A, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. You can't hold on to one. Mm-hmm. I try, uh, that one doesn't... That doesn't do much for me, I think. I, I don't remember what I liked about it, but I... It, it starts a little... But it gets in when it gets to the chorus. The chorus gets really good. Yeah. Because this part's a little like mm, they have, they have, a little that happens sign. a lot with some of the songs where it's yeah. like it, it, nothing's wrong with the verse right. particularly, but it's just not that interesting. And this part gets a little, a little like staccato and weird. Yeah, I love how he says like gato blaster. 
So this is Ben Orr, for example. This is mm. he's got that uh. very kind of he's he's got, he's got this more of a he does this like little Elvisy thing with his huh. voice sometimes where just a little macho ness right, to I'll it. Listen to that. So so far we're like eh okay, but then yeah. it's about to get badass. Yeah, yeah. badass. Cool little guitar echo. Cool part. That is the cool part. Yeah. Uh, yeah. One, one of my favorite uh, ones, and this is the one after Lust for Kicks, got a lot on my head. That's yeah. not bad, yeah. I, I Which, did um, too, yeah. But I, I had the, the lyrics wrong for this one. I, I And I, for a long time, I thought it was, I got a lot on my head. I, I don't it must know. Must have been you. It must have been you. Yeah. That's what I thought it was, but it's not. Oh, it's not? It's most of it is most you. It. Oh, even better. And then I got a lot on my head, can't forget about you. Right. I always thought it was like got a lot in my head to forget about you. Like I thought he was like somehow he was forget. He was like he's just too busy to be thinking about her. Mm. But that's not. It's the opposite. It's <laughs> he's he's thinking about her too much. Mm. And, okay. This one. Well, that's that's a good into. example of one of those songs that just starts out. And, and you don't like, like that? Ah. Did that bother you really? It's like just launching into the. Yeah, you know, it might have been the context thing. I was listening. You want a little more like easy that. ease into it? You know, <laughs> this is how I roll, man. I, I actually have a thing. I, I love songs that do it well. You know, that 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 just, just bust right in, bust right into it. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't always work. You yeah, do obviously. like that? I do. You mention that a lot. Yeah. I always thought you're right. I thought of it. It must have been you. Yeah. <laughs> this, is another, this is another good one where the lyrics just kind of chug along with the song. Mm-hmm. And it's really cool. So he doesn't say ghetto blasters cracking, which is what I thought he was oh. saying. He's saying the gallo glass is cracking. Whoa. So like a mean, glass of wine. Yeah, I don't even know what that means because the Gallo Blast was like a class of mercenaries. So in that's Ireland. why Gatto Blaster would have sounded a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that mm-hmm. makes more sense, I mm-hmm. guess. Uh, that's I think Ben or has a tendency to just warp words a lot. Like so, there's a lot of for, I think for him even more than Okasik. I think they, there's mis- misheard no, Rick. misheard lyrics. I'm trying to not use Rick <laughs> because apparently it's not okay to do. I really like when singers do that, though, when they warp words. Still yeah, really. uh, Spoon does that a lot. Brett Daniels yeah. in Spoon. Mm-hmm. And Elvis Costello does it a oh, lot. Oh, yeah. And, and know, it's, just it's like, so fascinating. It, it can be fun. The I choice. Mean, yeah. like to, You're like, I think it's that word. Oh, gosh, it's not that word at all. Yeah. Exactly. Or, or you know what word it is, but you can tell that they're like warping <laughs> it into some weird version of itself. Yeah. It's better than like being clear and then having a weird sibling S or like a thing that happens that takes you out of the moment. I also want to make one comment about Dangerous Type, mm-hmm. which I generally like the song, but mm-hmm. listening to it, I realized that the entire second half of the song is just him saying, she's a lot like you, the Dangerous Type, again and again and again. And I oh, knew really? he said it a lot toward the end, but it's actually more time saying it like that, just repeating that, than the whole first part where he's wow. actually singing a couple of mm-hmm. verses. Interesting. It's two hour, two minutes and 20 seconds worth of him saying that. And then, but the rest of the lyrics don't really explain what's so dangerous. That's, that's like there's nothing. <laughs> You're da- concerned. What's the danger? There's nothing it's dangerous. Spell it out for me. There's nothing dangerous about I the lyrics. I need to prepare myself. <laughs> I need to know how to avoid this anyway. danger. So, Panorama was next uh, a year later, 1980. And I remember this. This was, I think, it was the first album that came out when I was already a big Cars fan. Like, I think I really got into them, mm. especially when Candio had already just been released. You know, I was hearing them a lot on the radio and liked them, but. Mm-hmm. I started really getting into the more in Candia. And I bought it through uh, Columbia House Record Club. <laughs> like it was one of their featured mm-hmm. featured mm-hmm. things, you know. And I just remember getting it and listening to it and just think, wow, this is weird. You know, it sounded so experimental, which it was. It was their probably their most experimental album. Now it doesn't maybe sound as experimental, but it, it definitely it's more synthy, more it's more mechanized definitely than some of the the, the previous two. I mean, it makes Candio sound much less mechanized than it might have compared to the first album. 
And Sarah, like you, you, I think you said early on that uh, you hadn't listened to Panorama that much, and nor had Mm -hmm. I. So Mm -hmm. so this exercise is the first time I've ever really given it Mm -hmm. some listens. And uh, I don't like it as much as I like the first album, but I like this one. uh, This is my second favorite album. That's interesting. I I don't know if I would have guessed that that would be the case. And then there's like three songs on there that I like quite a lot. Panorama, the the Mm -hmm. name song, I really like that. That is a cool song. It took me a while to get get into it, but I really like it. It it occurred to me, I was listening to it yesterday, in fact, just... Took me a little while, but it suddenly I realized that sounds a lot like a Devo song. Mm-hmm. And there's so much. Which I think Rick Ocasek has said was one of his influences. Probably, yeah. yeah. They, they, they came out just a year. Well, they were some, kind of simultaneous with the first Cars album, but I think he might, must have been listening to them a lot and mm-hmm. it must have influenced this later, these later songs. Should we listen to uh, yeah. Panorama? Mm-hmm. Like this part's so Devo like. This is mm-hmm. exactly totally like a Devo is. song. Oh, and one thing I noticed on this, again, it, it, it had never occurred to me in all my years of knowing this album, but if you listen to several of these songs, this drum beat, the drum beat does not shift ever. Hmm. Throughout verse, chorus, it stays the huh. same. On this song, and it happens on uh, Up and Down and hmm. a couple other songs. Just, I mean, it might as well just be a drum machine, because hmm. for all I know it is, <laughs> programmed by David Robinson. But, <laughs> um, he did say he worked with the drum machines, too, so... Uh, but it just doesn't change. Well, it's kind of comforting because so much of their other other parts of their music is so diverse and different. It rains that, it all in, yeah. That maybe it's like nice to have a, something standing that is consistent. Yeah. Uh, it's like a spine running right, through the song, exactly. you know, it's just like... Yeah, again, like, if you have all that weird synthy stuff, you need something mm-hmm. to just hold everything together and keep it simplistic. Which I think, you know, if, if if it's true that Rick Ocasek was in a Buddy Holly, like, you can see where that influence came from, mm. right? Where it's, like, stripped down and very yeah. straightforward. Right, right. Not a very lot. concise. Yeah, sort yeah. Of kind of... Which, you know, it's minimalism and that's hard to pull off. Mm. It sounds like it's easy because it's so simple, but it has to be so perfect. To make it right. interesting. To, and, exactly. Yeah. Right. yeah. Okay. They are so tight. All yeah. of their stuff yeah. is mm-hmm. so tight. They mm-hmm. do such a great job with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they don't have any, like, jams, you know? <laughs> There's not, like, yeah. they're spacey yeah. stuff, but it's not, like, not wandering off. Yeah, some... which is one of the reasons why I like them so much. Yeah. I don't have time for that. Yeah. <laughs> or patience. <laughs> Grateful and come, Dead. And no, coming right you. after that song is Touch and Go, which is a Yeah, that, I really like band. that song. Yeah. That was the big single off mm-hmm. this album, which is mm-hmm. so weird because it's such an odd song. Mm-hmm. Like, it's got this bizarre mm-hmm. beat in the beginning of it. Mm-hmm. But this is like insanely iconic, this sound. Yeah. I didn't even know this was a car song. But you knew this. Oh, were, yeah. Were I, I knew this, yeah. yeah. And there's this country look that comes up. Locks into this very straightforward chorus. It's a gallop, yeah. It is a gallop. Hi ho. Well, and the thing is, he was. He, I, I think he's really good at m- meshing two completely different sections of a song to make it sound smooth and like it belongs together. Yeah. And and part of it may be that drum beat that keeps it the same exactly, throughout. Right. You know? yeah, good point. Yeah. Um, because this is so different than the other part, but it somehow it works. And back into that again. Yeah. So great. Yeah, nice transition back, mm-hmm. too. That... And the fourth song on there, I, I hope you don't mind me just kind of no, that's fine. bogarting all this. Don't tell me no. <laughs> don't tell me no, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Well, can we, can we just do Give Me Some Slack yeah. since that's the next song? Because that's, so, that's one of my favorite songs. Is it? Yeah. yeah. This is definitely one of the more guitar-oriented songs on this album because it has synths, of course. It has a little... 
I want to dance like LaGuardia. What does that mean? That's what he's saying. Exactly. It's, it's just, I, I like that one. That was one of the example of one of those that I, I do appreciate it a lot. <laughs> Alright, let's, let's move on to Don't Tell Me No, what you hear. It's very similar to the, some of those other songs on, on the Cars album that we yeah. talked about a while ago, the way they just have this steady, sort of flowing beat mm-hmm. and, and, uh, and rhythm to them. This moves right, yeah. That's, that cracks me up right <laughs> so there. So silly. So that's like Ben, again, Ben, ben Orr singing that. Is that Ben? That, yeah. Ah. Yeah, I can hear it. Yeah. Have some fun. Cause like he does this thing where he's just like very, like, uh, macho is the word that comes to mind, but I'm not sure that's quite, just kind of puts on a voice that. His voice is more steady. Like Rico Kasich always sounds like it's about to crack, you know, like uh-huh. a teenager singing and his voice is about to break. But Ben Orr has the more like, no, no trace of that. Well, Kasich sings on this one also. Is, is uh, no, I don't think so. It's maybe in the background there, but perhaps. All right. Uh, there aren't too many. There are a couple of songs where they like mm-hmm. switch verses, but mm-hmm. m- most of the time it's one or the other. Sarah, how familiar are you with this album? You, I'm not you're actually. Not I've listened to it a few times, but not as much as the other ones. Mm. You know, I grew up listening to Heartbeat City. That was like my that was my jam. Is your jam? Mm-hmm. And since then. I definitely listen to Candio and the, their first record. Like when I have a car full of people, I know that like Candio or the Cars, everyone is going to be you know, psyched. Please, crowd pleaser. But it is also it also <laughs> always feels like cool music to pick out because yeah. people are usually like, "Oh yeah, right. this is a thing." Like it's not a thing I necessarily reach for, but it's like it's a crowd pleaser. And I'll tell you, they sound great in the rain, so it's good for Seattle. There's All something right. something about the rain and the cars driving around is duly noted. Real good. <laughs> <laughs> it works really well. Yeah, the, this first three, not the first three songs, but you know, three of the first four songs captured me, but uh, it kind of fell off after that for me, mm-hmm. the rest of the songs. It, yeah, really I think I think they kind of packed a lot of the quality in the first, <laughs> first side of mm-hmm. the album. Mm-hmm. There's, no, there's no surprising sleepers on the second there side? There was. Well, oh, I was going to say there was on the first side. Getting through, I mm-hmm. didn't remember ever thinking much about that mm. but when i was listening to it for this mm-hmm. uh it stood out as being a much better song than i remembered it being I think. Hmm. now this is okay six singing but he's kind of doing the same thing ben Orr does like. a little bit of a country influence mm-hmm, a little bit putting on that little His sing is actually a little more raw on this than it normally is. It's like a little unpolished. They didn't they didn't like do too much to it sonically. Just a little reverb. In there. Yeah, I, I definitely appreciate this a lot more than I I think I previously had. Or... I like that little guitar there. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they really need that little synth in there. They go, ding, 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 ding. I don't know how much that really I really love it. To it I don't know. Yeah. I, it's weird. Yeah, I don't hate it. I, I just. Keeps the urge to see it. Yeah. This is a very urgent That's song. That's true, it is. It's got a really Certainly driving rhythm. Yeah, yeah. Um, there was one other song I wanted to point out. You Wear Those Eyes. It sort of stands out as a very different kind of song on this album. More atmosphere. And I think it's heavily influenced by another song I know that I was going to play a bit of in a minute. Sort of a spoken... Kind of like a film noir mm. uh, mm-hmm. song. Mm-hmm. Sort of. It definitely feels like you're walking down an alleyway right yeah. now. Yeah. You 
Cool sounds in here. Mm hmm. You let me know. You really are. There's another one where the drum beat never changes, it just stays this way. Yeah. Mm. Just take your time. I feel like I know what song you're talking about. You might. But I can't think of it while this one's in my Um, head. (laughs) It's funny. The the title. Play it and I'm going to be like, I knew it. It, it, The title of it actually kind of ties into something you were just saying a minute ago. Okay. So the the song that I think it sounded like, it reminded me Mm. immediately, is uh, by a group called Flash and the Pan. Nope. That's not the one I was thinking And the song's called Walking in the Rain. Okay. Oh, yeah. Did this come out before or after? Yeah, before. This was a couple years before. It was like 78. So when he was listening to Devo, he might have also been listening to this. This is cool. I like this. So far. Walking down the street. How about now? <laughs> Chicken cans. I like the way the voice is recorded. Looking at the billboard. Hmm. Oh, so rand. Summing up the people. Something like jazzy about it, which I, should, which I dig a lot. Checking out the race. Doing what I'm doing. Feeling out of place. Walking. Walking. In the rain. It's kind of a cool song. And, uh, the vocalization sounds a lot like someone else, too. Place at the moment. There's an interesting thing about this song. It's uh, uh, Flash on the Pan was actually a, a, a pseudo group, sort of, by producers Vanda and Young, who actually had their own band earlier on. It was George Young. They were in the Easy Beats in the 60s and had a hit. And George Young is the brother of Angus Young mm-hmm. and Malcolm Young mm. of ACDC. Of the shorts wearing Youngs. Yes, of exactly the shorts wearing Youngs. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> So it's just as weird because that is nothing at all like ACDC, of course. But mm-hmm. they these guys produced the first two ACDC. I'm not sure it was the first two, but two mm-hmm. of the early ACDC albums. Does, yeah. does their stuff sound a lot like that throughout the, this flash? Um, that's that's kind of cool. Similar, know, yeah. Right, I dug it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's pretty cool. I, I think there's a bit of variety, but it's all in that general Some mm-hmm. silly, silly style of vocalization. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. That was cool. I think my favorite song on Panorama is Up and Down. The very last mm-hmm. song. Last song. I actually I remember, this. like in the chorus of it. That is, I I used this one. I, I did a Rico Kasich in memoriam post on my blo- on the blog, mm. and I uh, used this one because I think I like his vocals on this especially. Ooh, the it's no more. So good. Yeah, this was actually where I first noticed that the drum beat does not change. The whole song is just like. <laughs> 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 He's got that kind of a whiny sound sometimes to his voice, must, but it works. I mean, it's just mm-hmm. like, it's a cool. Thing. Of going to this kind of like a circus carnival kind of chorus. Although this this to me sounds like it. Sometimes choruses and verses in car songs are interchangeable in a way. Yeah. I mean, they don't sound the same, but they could be. Right, one you or the can't other. tell which is which. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They yeah. kind of they don't seem too beholden to traditional song right. structure, just yeah. to their credit. I think. Exactly. I think he just wants it all to be catchy in some mm-hmm. way or another. But yeah, it's so good. voice in here is really cool. Yeah. yeah, it's a very, it really kind of captures a lot of what's distinct about his singing mm-hmm. style. You know? Cool. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to listen to it again. Yeah. yeah. It's a great album. I mean, yeah. it really, it really, I remember liking it, but I, I never really 
put it on a level with the other two, but mm-hmm. I think it's pretty close. I mean, mm-hmm. it's, yeah, it's definitely close to Candio anyway. And hmm. that first one, I think, will always be at a somewhat higher level for me. Yeah, yeah I, peak. I've had the, the vinyl of it forever, and I've never listened to it. Um, we were talking about this earlier, about mm-hmm. me not listening to the yeah. records that I own. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm a collector, so I just collect. Yes. Right? Oh, you know, yeah. you understand this, I understand Dave. That. I know you understand I, I that. Understand. Yeah. I understand. Um, and I and I would say that for me, one of the reasons I never tried it was because the front cover of it is not super appealing, <laughs> which yeah. is a yeah. is a piece of artwork done by the drummer of a checkered flag. Mm-hmm. And if you look at it up close and consider that it was like drawn by some or painted by someone. It's pretty amazing because the shadows mm-hmm. on it are really it's good. It's very photorealistic. Yeah. 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 And, and the colors of it, it's right in my sweet spot of black and white and dark mm. blue. That's kind of my wardrobe, but I don't know. I, to me, like as, as a rock and roll record, it's, it's not very right. appealing. Like it just has this it looks black like and white it, checkerboard. It looks dry. It looks kind yeah. of, there were a lot of bad eighties right. bands that had very similar. That's kind of, of yeah. Of, like yeah. I look at it, I'm like, Oh, that doesn't yeah. look like it would be very good. You know, like the first record, <laughs> right. the woman with the like, like, um, Lucite steering wheel, yeah. that looks like fun with the one with the cocktail shaker, shake it up. That looks like a fun record, yeah. you know, even heartbeat city, which apparently we're about to find out why you hated so much. <laughs> that looks like a fun record to listen to panorama, like the typography on this, the mm. color on it, the image on the front of it. Like, I'm so sorry, Dave Robinson to say this, but mm. As a designer, you might not be hitting the mark here because yeah. it doesn't, you know. But it is a very nice painting. It's very realistic. Yeah. yeah. The back is pretty interesting. It's yeah. got these. I was admiring that. Everybody has a guitar. <laughs> That's so yeah, 80s. It's got cool, uh, yeah, it's so 80s. The silhouette. Cool thing. photos of like the band members with like yeah. weird shadows and stuff, yeah. which is cool. But yeah. It'd be cool to put that on like a record player and have it spin. Watch it spin. Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, I think, I think having the uh, that angle on the, the checkered flag is maybe mm. better than just like. Showing somebody waving it or something, but no. Uh, well, I mean, it depends. It's I mean, a, if it's a woman's hand with like really red nails, that's true. Actually. You know, oh, and it's like if good. if you just had a woman's hand with red nails in yeah. this, boom, twenty times more appealing because yeah. you have a human element in it. Right. You have a little more color, and it ties into their previous mm-hmm. album covers. Yeah, I think that, that would, too, yeah. and you know, I could yeah. see it in that soft focus style, like shake it up, like you could do that, and that would be sure. yeah. a lot more appealing. This is very, yeah. it's a little flat and boring kind of look. I have to agree with you. I had a curiosity. Mm. Uh, so originally, you know, there's, there's the five albums we're, we're doing now. But originally we just talked about four albums. Uh-huh. Skipping Shake It Up. Right. Which is right in the midst of those five albums. Mm. And I'm, I'm kind of curious. Why did I how, suggest- how'd, you, how'd you go with those particular albums? I was suggesting skipping Shake It Up because it, it kind of had a reputation of being a bad album. Mm-hmm. Like, Oh, yeah? Or a, is low, that like, a low point. Is that kind of like a like a general, general consensus? Held consensus kind like of, it's yeah. It's just not a great record? I mean, I'm sure there are plenty oh, of people who love the record. And, sure, sure. And uh, to be honest, I... Upon listening to it, it's mm. not that bad. Mm. It was better than I remembered it mm. overall. What's a good song There's from it? There's some definite weak points, but mm. what's a good sign from it? Yeah. I mean, um, I, I, I've listened to yeah. it. I, I did pay $2 for it, so it can't be that good. <laughs> well, there's a Shake It Up. Everybody knows mm-hmm. that song. That's It's very typical Cars, just a fast rock and little ditty. Not a particularly special song, I think, but it's it's a good version of the Cars, you know? Mm-hmm. And, since you're gone, kind of stands out for me. Yeah, actually, since you're gone is definitely. Uh, let's, let's play that one. That was the first song on the album. Mm-hmm. I like this intro. It's kind of... almost clappy. It is clappy, but it's not claps. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like this one a lot. This was a pretty big hit. This, uh, besides "Shake It Up," I think this is the other big one. His voice in here is really cool. Uh, his vocals. Yeah. This sounds like a song to play over the credits of an '80s movie. <laughs> Beginning or end. <laughs> Yeah. 
as I was taking notes about this album, I realized that uh, I'm Not the One may be my favorite ballad by them. Hmm. Although Drive, I do like Drive a lot. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. It's a great song. I have so many um, feelings about Drive. Yeah, we'll, mm. we'll get to that. But mm-hmm. uh, but I'm Not the One is definitely a great ballad. It's probably their, if it's not their best, it's their second best. It definitely yeah. is. It doesn't start out great. The, this this part is a little Casio it sounds like a rap cheesy. song in the nineties. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it gets much better. Um, his singing, his singing on this is really good. I think it's Rick. I feel like Warren G's about to break in. That's, it. <laughs> That's really uncharacteristic of them. Mm-hmm. This guitar. Like for for Okasic, this is very emotional singing like this is more so than more so than uh, we're used to from him and I like this that background vocal too like Okasic doesn't like become a balladeer very frequently and like this is he's in that mode here he's kind of like a little loungy sort of for him you know like it's, it's not that detached not as detached I don't have a hard time with this and I don't listen to the cars to hear this type of ballad I listen mm-hmm. to the cars because I like the cars oh I don't either like the but, punchy like but it, yeah. rocky kind of vibe I don't that's definitely not, not why I listen to him either but I mean I, I, I like the song it's, yeah. it's pleasing it's, it's pleasant it's, and they don't do ballads very much, so I mean, to say that it's their best or second best is really not saying that much because it's like yeah, there are only five of them or so. There are a couple of good, uh, like Cruiser is is pretty good. It's a pretty good electronic rocker, as I referred to it here. I think the vocals are a bit melodramatic, even for Ben Orr, but it, and it's one of those songs that. To me, it's something that jumped out about it and occasional other songs that they do is like, since he's singing Ocasek's lyrics, he doesn't necessarily have like a, an emotional connection to them. And mm-hmm. I think sometimes, frequently, he, it's, it's fine. But there's times when I feel like there's some sort of disconnect where it's just like he's just singing them and he doesn't really feel them or whatever. He's not mm-hmm. like, he's just like... Well, maybe he had the Reading same opinion up. as you earlier. They're nonsensical. What the hell? Yeah, is what does this mean, Rick? <laughs> and he could call him Rick, of course. He wouldn't call him a kid. <laughs> so. You don't know. Maybe they had a band structure where you had to call hey, him Mr. Ocasek. Ocasek. Mr. Ocasek. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Ocasek. I mean, there are oh, they Mr. are wearing Ocasek. ties in a lot of their band photos. That's true. <laughs> He's a taskmaster. Mm-hmm. Here, I'll play a little bit of Cruiser. I, I think one of the things about this album is that even though there's some good songs, there n- none of them stand out as mm-hmm. being like great car songs mm-hmm. right right like they're perfectly passable and enjoyable in some ways mm-hmm. but but i think that's maybe why this has that reputation it's not being very special now, similarly that think it think it over kind of stood up for me in that same mm-hmm. category yeah There's a little bit of Talking Heads comparison too, mm. in the vocalization. Mm-hmm. You're right. Yeah. yeah. A little bit. I, I, I see that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because David Byrne kind of did have a an affected voice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah. David Byrne really inhabits them really so well. Like, mm. just, yeah. Like, like, which I don't always get from. Yeah. From this. Um, like, I think what it was about the song is like I was reading the lyrics as I was listening to it. it it's it's one of those songs where I, I feel like okay so was just sort of just reeling off a bunch of lines that didn't mean a whole lot together mm-hmm. just sounded good and, and it's a good sounding song but the lyrics just don't don't do well a whole lot and like i said i don't think i don't think ben Orr was connecting with them very well either mm-hmm. so there are a couple of like truly lame songs on here i don't have to play <laughs> them but but it's like the first yeah, time maybe, maybe don't maybe yeah. it's better if you don't I, I won't but well no i'm really curious i think it's the <laughs> first it's the first album that actually had any because i don't think i think everything on the first three you know maybe you don't love everything equally but mm-hmm. there, there's something interesting going on in most of the songs mm-hmm. you know, like, mm-hmm. 
and I wouldn't accuse any of them of being lame, you know, but, but there are a couple here. They're just like so generic. It could be anybody, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's any eighties, lame eighties band. <laughs> uh, like, uh, this could be love. Mm-hmm. That was Maybe pretty the title alone. Yeah. Well, it's pretty weak. This could be love. This could be a song. <laughs> Uh, on my record. Think think it over. I thought it was pretty pretty lame. Did you say you liked I, Think I, It Over? Was that one? There, there was something liked? that stands out about it. It sticks out of my memory for some reason. Well, what? this oh, this could be Love was written by Rick Ocasek and Greg Hawks. Oh, I think yeah, I think it's the it's only the one only one on that was a the record. had a co write mm-hmm. uh, and their whole I think maybe their whole catalog. But think it over. I I, I noted that uh, the vocal he was. I, I must be an or, but it sounded somewhere between Iggy Pop and Elvis Presley. I have to play a little bit now just to refresh my memory here, too. <laughs> the production on this record doesn't sound as good as the other ones. It's a little muffle, uh, it's muddled. It's a little tinny. It's a little, maybe. like, shallow. Yeah, yeah. Which, with the style of their music, with it being so electronic, is, is terrible. Like, mm. basically hamstrings it. Yeah. Kind of like hamming it up or something. Sounds like it belongs in the Pretty Woman soundtrack. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's just it's yeah. Not, mm. not not really much. Yeah. Going on there, and and then the last song, maybe baby. I just the, the drums were like way over the. They're the same thing where the drums go out through the whole song. But that they, that goes on the whole song. Well, there's a little bit of the previous song fading out there, but this. This goes throughout the whole song. Like, just first chorus, first, and it's just a... It's like, you can't... This is just a hard energy to, like, appreciate throughout an entire song. Stories. And it... It made me think that, combined with what I read... David Robinson saying about the drumming, I, I think maybe Ocasek sort of under pre, undervalues drumming. Hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a point to it too, as we sort of said, you know, mm. it kind of helps anchor songs and everything, but, but he seems like he doesn't really care that much about what the drums sound like, you mm. know, like he doesn't, doesn't realize that that's like maybe overkill for the whole song or hmm. other songs where it's just like this one, boom, 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 just, you know, there could be more interesting stuff going on, even if it doesn't go crazy, you know? Well, you know, perhaps yeah. it's a bandwidth thing. You know, he has the energy <laughs> for the the keyboard and the vocals and the guitar, but you know, just doesn't have the bandwidth. So well, and that the, should be the drummer's role, or yeah. a lot of times. And but maybe, but the way he kind of controls the stuff too, he maybe just wasn't also allowing for that to be a factor. But or maybe he like did it deliberately. Sure, as like a a thing where he was like, "This yeah. is you know, this is the thing I want to try. I think it works for whatever artistic yeah. reason." Who knows? I mean, I, it definitely it's wild right. conjecture. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't feel like the first album does not feel that way at all. Maybe probably the second either. I don't even think about drums. There, being... there weren't songs in there that just had it picked a beat. And stuff not as much. I, I mean, if they did, I hmm. didn't. I didn't notice. Anyway, so it's a it's a pretty mediocre album. Mm-hmm. A little better than I remembered it being. Like mm-hmm. there was a few more enjoyable points than I thought I would experience. But so that brings us to the their biggest album. Not best, oh. but they're biggest. Is that why you don't like it? Because it's too popular? No, that has nothing to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it was, uh, took them from being star. they were already stars at this point to some extent, but this like put them over the top. This was like number one album for several weeks or whatever. And some of the, they had, like three or four hits off of it, big hits. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so it really made them even more of a household name maybe than they, they were before. Interestingly, though, it's the last time they had a really big album. Everything after that, I think they just sort of fell apart as a band, partly. It's a big part of it. Uh, I think Ben Orr left at some point. I'm not sure it was... Is he on Door to Door or whatever that album is? I don't even know that album. Is that him in the lower right there? It looks like him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he's still on so it. I guess he's there. But. So this was their biggest and also their their last big assortment of hits. Mm-hmm. So, so Sarah, tell us a little bit about your feelings about this album. Oh, about Heartbeat City? Yes. Um, well, I mean, it was, you know, there was the, the Cars record that I listened to as a kid. So yeah. 
like emotionally and, and nostalgically, it's my it's my favorite. I mean, I wouldn't say it's my favorite of their records necessarily. I just think it's a it's a really good record. It has some mm. great songs in it, and the opening song "Hello Again," which is like the most fun dance song ever, and starts out with this weird like zoom, like sucks you in, like to it, and then it has all these like fun noises in it and this really fast beat. I just think it's a great dance song. Mm. Yeah, you don't. You, do you hate it? What's going on over I, there? What are you I, holding back, man? Just I, give. Just even then, it. Oh, it came out. I, I was in like freshman year of college when this album came out, mm-hmm. and kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Anyway, I think why, but it was just so hyper polished and, mm. and overproduced, and and I hate Hello Again pretty much. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. I mean, it's catchy. I will admit that it's like yeah. a very catchy song, but it's just like there's not anything there that I enjoy huh. and, and that hearing. song or that album that song yeah there's some do you, songs do you like it eric hello again i uh, i don't have strong feelings let's, about that let's, song. let's get in there a minute yeah the beginning is so fun hello. Hello wow i hate that i hate that introduction this part i don't mind because this is more cars like that other part is just like who is this it's like what It's such a good dance song. Yeah. I don't understand how the, produ- the producer who produced Back in Black for ACDC could produce an album like this. Like, well, he didn't finish it. Which, this album? He, he didn't, yeah, they like, kind of, he left off part of the way through. Yeah. All right, I like the song more. <laughs> it's so fun. And then it has this great lyrical, like, section too. That we're not at yet, but you can turn the music off if it's upsetting. No, 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 it's, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what you get there? Uh, my, my notes were catchy, but I kind of hate it. <laughs> that's, that's, that's all you got. That was what I. <laughs> I just reminded that it never did much for me. Did we get to that part yet? Or, oh, no, is it that you can, slow? I, can, I know what no, you're talking you can, about. No, you can turn it down. Um, it was, it's the part where he goes, you want to feel electric. You want to oh. feel loose. Loose. You want to be eclectic. You want to call a truce. Like, I just, it's so ridiculous, but it's great. And I yeah. love that he's using the word eclectic as I, an insult. Mm. I like the way it's he sings. so good. Yeah, I like the way he sings that part. I, yeah. I, I know what you're talking about. It, like, that whole, that whole thing of using that word as an insult, to me, taps into this thing with them that I feel like this is like endemic to their whole vibe and their whole musical like output is that on one hand they're deeply cool they're so cool like the music is really interesting and unique and and the lyrics are kind of deep and like Mm -hmm. you know it's all this stylization but they're also so dorky and like not (laughs) cool in any way right right? right. when you look at the pictures of them and I, I just think that that there's this constant thing that happens in their lyrics where they're playing with the idea of being a cool person and are you a cool person and it's like that love song on one of the Mm. first records where it was like you're all i've got tonight you know like there's always this element element Mm. in all of their songs to me where he's saying he knows they're not cool they're dorky weirdos and they don't necessarily want to be cool and they're making fun of the things that are cool but then they're also fucking cool as shit so it's a really interesting thing to me that just keeps like giving and giving throughout their music right I feel like Ben Orr is like the cool guy in the group, sort of like he maybe get, Mr. you know Mr. Lollipop. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. I don't mean. Well, yeah. I don't think he's the coolest. But no I think uncool guy would. He's like that. he's get like the it. one that. I mean, without him, they would all look completely just like dorky, you know. And he, but he kind of gives them a, a front hmm. man who you know, kind of a detached kind of coolness. And I don't know. It, that's that's my inter- interpretation. Because even Okasik isn't really. I mean, he's cool. But he doesn't look cool. He doesn't no, have that he cool doesn't. feel. You know? No. Yeah. They're easy to kind of yeah. laugh at them a little so, yeah, bit. So, you know, yeah, as I'm thinking about it, you're describing that. It's like he has a, a bees G's sort of uh, appeal to him. Is that, would you characterize it that way? Bees G's? Bee Gs? The Bee Gs. Oh, <laughs> Bees G's? Bees G's? <laughs> Uh, that's, like, know, that's like the bees. That's the plural. That's the plural of BG. <laughs> it's the bees G's. <laughs> that's more than one. Wow. Uh, or it's like there's the bees knees. Did Maybe say, you're thinking did of that. I, say that out loud? Yeah. I love that you said that out loud. But we have to watch out. You can't make fun of them because um, Barry Gordy will come after us. He's. Hmm. I don't. He might be dead. Is he dead? Barry Gordy. 
Not Barry Gordy. Oh, Bar- Barry Gibb. Gibb. Yeah. Barry Gibbs. Barry Gibbs? Gibb. Gibb. Oh, just it wouldn't be. The, the Brothers Gibb. <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> Brothers Gibb. <laughs> yeah. Two Gibbs. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, those guys are terrifying. So what was your, your point about the Bee Gees? Oh, the, oh the, the appeal that he has, as I was looking at the picture on the back of that album. Oh, like... He kind of has that... He's he's kind of a, a sexy-looking, good-looking guy. Well, that's where Barry... Barry Gibb was the oh. good-looking one of yeah. the group. And yeah. whereas... His brother Robin. Robin and Morris were not, Morris. particularly... <laughs> But yes, yeah, I think I think he it helps it helps them. I, I think it helped them have a a cooler look. But I was trying to think of a way to sum this up when I was listening to it. It's like, what do I not like about it? And basically, my my summary was on which they lose their personality. And I think that's what I don't like about it. it like mm. it doesn't sound like a Cars album to me, or it's not. And there are moments, of course, but on the whole, it could be any competent '80s pop band. <laughs> And it doesn't feel like anything particularly special. El Kasich's lyrics on this get really straightforward. I don't know mm. if you've noticed that, but on a, like Drive, mm. I mean, he'd never wrote a song like Drive before. No, I mean, that's it's, very different. it's like a straight ahead love song. No, or, but, but it is. I mean, there's, it is. I mean, there are twists, but but I mean, it's just like so direct. Yes. He's talking to somebody. Well, like, okay. Like, so yeah. I hear what you're saying. Like to you, it doesn't sound like a Cars record because maybe mm. it doesn't have the weirdness. It doesn't have the like edges to it. It's more smooth. It's more Sounds polished. Interesting. But like mm-hmm. maybe, maybe this is like them actually fucking getting to the, like all the elements coming together and just being like, boom, this is just perfect. Like these songs are just really good. They're not, they don't have weird moments in them that hook you and make you confused mm. about it. They just come right out like hello again. Like it starts out crazy and weird with all their synthy things. It's just an upbeat, dancey song. And then it's, it's done, you know, and drive like, yeah, it sounds like maybe the most straightforward love song, but it also at its heart is so poignant and gets at something so effectively emotionally yeah. that isn't just a flat ballad so maybe right. it's up to us to accept them and they're it's changed that they're yeah offerings. it's part of it's part of like the 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 arc that they went if, on if and, that's them hitting perfection i don't like it it's it's well, too I perfect i mean and that's part of the problem too maybe, it's just like yeah. too there's no room for like error in the, these songs it's well, just and, like and they didn't too, do anything after this yeah no, right they, so they, it makes sense right they had the first record that came out that was so fucking great and had all this amazing promise and they kept that same sound through all the records to like varying degrees of kind of successfulness and this is like boom here we go like this is ex- this is like the most perfect way we know how to make this kind of music and this is well, like 3 years after I, the I, last album that they recorded from what i understand from things i read uh, okay so had by this point taken much more of a i don't want to say heavy hand but just mm. more control over mm-hmm. how the song sounded and his demos had gotten more and more intricate, sort of. Mm-hmm. So they ended up following the demos a lot closer. Mm-hmm. And so I think it might be him just trying to perfect his his song. I don't know. I, I it just doesn't work for me. Uh, no just, longer writing by committee or something like that. Yeah, a little less input from the others. So maybe it lost. Maybe that's part of the reason I don't see it as having as much Cars personality because it's more Rick. Okay, his I, I haven't listened to all of his solo stuff, mm-hmm. but the solo stuff I heard was really dull. And yeah. I had I had one or two of them, and you know they were. They're fine. Occasional high points, but nothing to be said, you know, nothing much to speak for them. But uh, Can we talk about magic? Sure. Because this song is amazing. I do like magic. It has this weird UFO <clears throat> opening, and then it's just like straight fucking power pop opening yeah. chords, and the first word of it is just summer. It's just like <laughs> the most mm-hmm. perfect, like you just in a car with the top down. Summer, it turns me upside down. Yeah. Summer, yeah. it's just, it's great. It's it's the best of the upbeat songs in this album, I think. They, I mean, they're all upbeat, but the, the more mm-hmm. the high, fast tempo, mm-hmm. you know, I think it's the best of those. And I think it's saved by the guitar and synth interplay that they have in this one, because they, they do a really good job of that on this. Let's listen. <laughs> it is a supreme song that starts just like this. Yeah.
Somebody made a clicky sound in that yeah. song. That's funny. I just heard that too. I don't yeah. know if I've ever noticed that. This would be a great karaoke song to sing. Yeah, yeah. this would be. It would be really fun. Like, those backing vocals are just too cheesy. Right? Like, oh, it's so fun. They're so fun. Backing vocals are cheesy as hell most of the time anyway, if you, like, really get... <laughs> come on, like, what is it, Drive My Car by the Beatles? Beep, 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 beep yeah. yeah! It's, like, yeah, the really cheesiest sounds like... background ever. Also, I never realized that that line, at the beginning, I see you under the midnight, all shackles and bows. That's pretty sweet. <laughs> like, dressed up, but, like, constrained by social, mm-hmm. you know? Oh, like, trying yeah. too hard to, like look the right way right social right. shackles and like boat yeah it's good it's effective a drive is <sighs> as i said it's I want to talk about this song. definitely the best song on the album by a long shot and it's a it's a great great song I, so before just real quick so you know i had this cassette tape uh growing up that was like a big deal and then when i was in college i got back to listening to records and i got a record player and heartbeat city was one of the first records i had in that time mm. and i can so clearly picture sitting in my pop zone chair in the, you know, those chairs that are like, yeah, the, yeah, those big yeah, yeah, in the window of my room. And we had these long curtains and the breeze was just blowing them just a little and like sitting in the sun on this chair and listening to drive. And it was just like the most perfect thing I'd ever heard. Cause the, the tone of melancholy that this song has, it's to me, it's the most perfectly captured description of the end of the party. When you're feeling that excruciating, like teen misery over everything Mm -hmm. and nothing at the same time. And you just have this like sense that things aren't the way you want them to be, but you have no idea how to make them the way you want them to be or even what they could be to make you feel better. It's like cheesy, you know, who's going to pay attention to your dreams? Who's going to plug your ears when you scream, but it's just the overall sense of this yearning of it, of wanting someone who will understand all your messy and complicated feelings and always love you. It, it that it just captures this like idea of love and emotion between two people that's mm-hmm. kind of unformed but so passionate and so 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 emotional and so driven, yeah. but isn't really quite real yet because it's not at a realized state, you know. Right. Well, and it's there are so few cars songs that have a lot of emotion to them as we've mm-hmm. already sort of hinted at, but this has all of that mm-hmm. and and it works, you know. And it, and I think a big part of that for me was is Ben Orr. His vocals on this are probably his best vocals, I think, mm. of any car song because he's really, you can really hear how good a singer he is on this. And he's clearly connecting with the lyrics. And it kind of makes me wonder where Kasich was at, like, to write this song. Mm-hmm. And when, whereas he typically would be so much more elusive about his meanings and everything. It's just mm-hmm. a very moving song. Mm-hmm. And, and that's not something you say for a lot of car stuff. Let's listen. Shall we? Hmm. Oh, sorry. Nice congos or something going on back yeah. there. I hadn't really noticed before. Yeah. Who's gonna pay attention to your dream? 
Oh, who's going to plug their ears? Hmm. Hmm, interesting. I, I, my favorite part of the song is when he sings that you can't go on oh, thinking yeah. nothing's wrong. Yeah. That, that whole little the melodic change there mm-hmm. and the way he sings it is just it's really sweet. This song always makes me feel things. Yeah. Like every time. It's like that Seinfeld episode where Elaine had that dude that liked Witchy Woman by the Eagles. And it would come on and he would just get this like thousand yard stare. <laughs> <laughs> That's how the, this song is like that for me. Yeah, like I, this song comes on and I immediately just want to write in my diary. I'm like, <laughs> you know, cry yeah, quietly to yeah. myself. It's a perfect song for like looking out a, a window with raindrops. Mm-hmm. Coming down. And it's just mm-hmm. uh, rainy. It's a great yeah, Seattle it song. Feels, yeah, it's very <laughs> melancholy and sweet yeah. and beautiful yeah. and kind of like... Nobody's going to get me, but maybe he will get me. He's watching from across the crowded room. <laughs> you know, I get that this is kind of a really nice song and it has a nice flow to it, but it doesn't really do all of it. No. Me. Yeah. Mm-mm. I think it's kind of kind of dull, really. Yeah. I, and, mm-hmm. I, and I really like what he does with his voice in some places, like what you were just talking about. Mm-hmm. But uh, it just seems so... Perhaps it's because of my own expectations of what a Cars song is supposed to mm-hmm. sound like, and this is so different from what they mm-hmm. normally do. Interesting. It is. It's definitely different. Uh, and I think when I first heard it, when it came out, I, I don't think I appreciated it as much, but I think it grew on me over the years. Mm-hmm. And I definitely like it a lot more now than I did at the time. I think maybe for the same reason. I mean, maybe I was like, oh, this is not yeah, this like is a car song. What the hmm. hell? It's just, but it stands out as the best best written song on the, the album mm-hmm. and recorded, I think, too. But. And this is also, I don't know if it was Drive, but it was one of the songs on this album where I watched, try and watch the YouTube video or the MT video. And, <laughs> oh, man, it was painful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Could, too much hairspray. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They are all pretty cheesy videos. Uh, I don't know, man. You can say what you want, but they were had a huge effect on video like culture, and they were sure like a big part of MTV in the beginning. Oh, they know. Which yeah, is a, which yeah. is a big and deal. back then, I, I think I liked it, but it's, yeah. it's my, my reaction. I don't think it's it. aged yeah. that well, the, yeah. the yeah. style yeah, of video. That. I think that's maybe more of the problem. Well, yeah, I mean, it's so, like, the production of it. Yeah. The production value is so, yeah. compared to what we're used to now. Yeah. Oh, my we're God. Spoiled now. Yeah. I think they put up all their put all their strong stuff up front on this album because it gets really generic on the second side. Uh, I like Jackie a lot. I like how Jackie starts Jackie. with the name of the record saying Heartbeat City. Mm. Here we oh, go. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, Heartbeat Oh, yeah. Actually, I, well, I, my note here too is if that finishes more strongly. Cause yeah. And I like I Refuse too. That's mm. got some good backing vocals on it. Mm, yeah. Let's take a little listen mm-hmm. here. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, for me, like, God, I, I wouldn't say, like, it's their most, it's certainly not as interesting of a record as Candy O and as their first, as the Cars, uh, hands I think, down. But these songs are really easy to listen to. Not interesting to listen to, though. It's like, not this one anyway. I mean. Yeah, but you might. could put this record start to finish and it's like, it's totally fun. No. No? Not for you guys? <laughs> this actually, a couple of these songs really kind of nauseate me so much. Right? <laughs> yeah. They, they just make me want to gag because yeah. they're so, so slick and the worst things about 80s pop music. Well, I have, I have a note here next to Stranger Eyes. It's not an interesting enough song, or, <laughs> not an interesting enough sound That's... to want to get into the lyrics of it and try and understand mm. what he's saying. This is, yeah, this is Stranger Eyes. This is the one I put Ugg next to. Yeah. It's just, oh, God, this is hideous. Yeah, but I like music like this. It's well, you know. music. And it's a good example of this type of music. I'm also thinking, you know, you were you were younger when you yeah. heard it than I first did. And you definitely have more sentimental attachment to it. I still like it. listening to it now, though. Like, I don't think Ugg when I hear it. But don't you song. think some of the sentiment still plays a part in that? Probably. Yeah, I mean, so, it's impossible to like. Yeah, you can't separate it. Though. But to me, like, this is a part of the catalog, and I enjoy it as much as I enjoy their yeah. other records. Yeah. Like, I don't... It's a different. It's different from the other records. Was this how you got into the Cars? Yeah, yeah, because this was this the only like, one I had when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. But I just, I listened to this, I liked this, this has, like, good hit songs on it. Hello Again Drive, you might think, are, like, I think they're fucking mm-hmm. great songs. Mm-hmm. They're hits, they're great songs. And then, uh, you know, when I got a little older, I listened to, like, The Cars and Candy O, and they were fucking cool as shit. So yeah. in my mind, yeah. I'm just like, this band is just <laughs> great. Right. You know, these are, like, three really good records. If they were yeah. their only records, like that would still be really good. Like these, yeah, you know, they made they made hits, big hits with this record. Yeah, it was it was huge. It was, yeah, it was a big big record. Yeah, I I just I feel I, I guess 
as I said, I just think it's, a lot of it is very generic to me. And and, mm. and I guess if I got into it first, is my entry point. Mm. See, I don't know if I would though. I, I, if mm. I'd heard this first, I would have thought, oh, cars. Yeah, I'm not really a fan. Yeah. And hopefully, I would have gotten around to the earlier ones. Anyhow, so any, mm-hmm. anyway. I kind, I kind of like the "Why Can't I Love You" also. Mm-hmm. Third from you. Oh, that was in my string of three really weak songs. I, there was. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's so good. The beginning. That's kind of fun. There's just so many bad 80s songs that sound just like this. and I Yeah, but this probably came first. No, not no. 80, by 1984. There are even plenty of these. Well, this was... Um, this is 84. 83. I think what I like about it is that, that synthesizer sound to it. Mm-hmm. Kind of abrupt. So it goes... I, I'm also not a big fan of synthesizers that mimic human voice. Occasionally it works, but mm-hmm. like does that happen in this song? Yeah, oh, that's it. It's it's a vocal. It's like a vocoder kind of. That's what synth. that main yeah. synthesizer sound is, right there. Like, oh, oh, you can hear it saying something through. It's actually talking. Through. That's rad. That makes me like the song even more. Mm-hmm. That's cool as shit. Because you can't tell, really. It's very, it's, it's pretty subtle. subtle. That's really brilliant, actually. And there's like this great later on in the chorus where he like talks over part of the chorus. Mm. Like, Can I have one? It's good. I like listening to it. And we're not going to even play You Might Think, their biggest hit of their whole career. Do you, because want, me to, Dave, do you want me to play? Do you not like that song either, Eric? It was, it was one of those songs that I just heard too many times. Oh, really? Is that yeah. what it is? Well, and that's that's part of it for the hits, too. Oh. I mean, like, We don't have to listen to it. It's okay. I mean, I know what it sounds like. You might think it's fun. It's a fun, uh, fun song. It's I might goofy. think it's fun. I do think it's fun. <laughs> uh, that was uh, good, right? Yeah, good. Yeah. Um, I didn't even write anything about it, but I, I just... It, I got yeah, the arrow was, going down. It was, <laughs> it was so I ubiquitous. Think, I think, you know, was, like, just like where you're saying that maybe for me it's a nostalgia thing, I feel like this record for you guys just maybe just got so overplayed. Well, and, and it has to do with perhaps the videos. The videos were really good, and so they played them a lot. I'm a like, lot, God, yeah. Man. And so I could see that feeling, like, at some point if something gets played too much, like, it gets killed for you, right? I, I was watching a lot of MTV at the time, too, because yeah. it was, you know, really at its peak uh, or uh, hit a peak and uh, mm-hmm. it, they were everywhere mm-hmm. with these songs and that probably killed it too I mean but it was on the radio all the time and it's yeah I mean over overkill mm-hmm. was definitely played a part yeah. I think and, and looking at the video again recently mm-hmm. it, my impression was it's kind of dumb the, the video is dumb oh I think it's great it's weird I love how weird and goofy it is. It's mm. so silly. It's crazy to me that they spent all that money to make it and that's what they did to it. Like, it's just... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're not taking themselves. Like, so it could, you know, it, it may be a giant commercial success, but those dudes did not take themselves seriously. They were totally messing around with that format, yeah. which is pretty cool, considering would, how much money it probably took to make it. When I was watching the videos, I wish I would have saw the one where he, he was the head of the fly and those others, I'd forgotten that's about for that. That's for you, yeah. I think. Is that is that the yeah, one? Yeah, that's yeah, their yeah, biggest you're video. Right, you're right. Yeah, it's like yeah. Let's, let's go ahead and play a little bit. Okay. <laughs> it's it's a fun song. I mean, but I just it's so heard funny it's just like review this band and four of their records and you guys are like, oh, their biggest hit. I hate it. I don't want to ever hear it. <laughs> it's their biggest hit, but not their best. Song. Well, that that okay. keyboard in there that that's that's a little um, clingy yeah. or something. I like the guitar sound, but it's the same the guitar sound they. Do so frequently. I mean, I did like this song a lot when it came out. I, I will give, ah. I, I'll admit it. I didn't like Hello Again mm. nearly as much, but just something like that. Yeah. 
because he's still singing in that goofy voice yeah, too. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's still got all the hallmarks of all of their music. It just happens to be way easier to listen to and appeal to a huge wide range of people. Well, you know, yeah. it's not like they're not being true to their their shit. It's got all the same shit yeah. from all their other music. It just is produced a little more slickly. And he has one of the weirdest voices yeah. for a hugely popular band. Yeah, right. You know, like and to, he to didn't really change get a that cut. at all. No, he didn't try to smooth it yeah. out or and anything. The, and the video too with them in it, like they're dressed hair the same as all of their band photos up to that point. It's not like they got on MTV and changed who they were. Like mm. this is them. Yeah. No, that's, that's mainstream true. giant hit makers being exactly who they've been the whole time. They, they were consistent in, in being themselves, I think, yeah. throughout their career. Yeah. As far as I could tell. Partly because I think they settled on a style mm. right away. Like mm-hmm. they, they, they knew how they wanted to present themselves. Visually or musically? Vis- visually mm. is really what I mean. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, um, and they stuck with it. I mean, it worked. It worked for them. Uh, they, and they actually, I think it synced up pretty well with where the 80s ended up going. You know, because mm-hmm. when they started that, it was 78. And that was just the beginning of New Wave. And, you know, that's one of the things. They're, they're considered a New Wave band by a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Some consider them just a rock band, but I mean, when you take it all into account, New Wave is probably a well, aren't better they, descriptor. Aren't they like the first mainstream New Wave band? Uh, like, not by a lot of people. Like, Blondie, was, Cars, Blondie was probably maybe just a little ahead of them with like Heart of the Glass came out just yeah. before. But, but yeah, I mean, they were definitely one of the first mm-hmm. big New Wave bands. The first couple of albums I, I wouldn't quite classify as New no? Wave. Maybe Candio more so, but. I feel like to me it's more new wave than this record is. Yeah, I mean it's it treads some kind of line because mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know it, that first album really rocks too. It's like mm-hmm. that's a rock band too. It's not just a because there are a lot of new wave bands you would never say oh they're a rock band. Mm-hmm. You know, they're, so I'm just saying I think they kind of had a fairly even mix. Mm-hmm. Of, well, with the way they bring the synthesizer in, I think that makes a big difference and separates them from the rest. Yeah, and, and mm-hmm. brings that new agey sound to rock and roll. And they didn't completely rest on that mm-hmm. as their sound it was just interwoven amongst the the driving guitars or and, and rick okay's and, voice also that's so different as well it's yeah kind of new yeah. agey or mm-hmm. uh, new wavy new wavy yeah i mm-hmm. mean it's uh as definable as their sound is you can't really it's hard to pinpoint what they were some people just call them just a pop band you know mm-hmm. they were popular throughout their career i mean they somehow i think it's dork rock Dork Rock. <laughs> yeah. I think it. I think it is. Despite the Barger Girl Dork album cover, a, a little yeah, like my, a little like the, rock. like the nerd funk of. Yeah, uh, it's it's nerd. Nerd. I, th- I think retroactively Dork. we should rename that. Dork, Dork, Dork Rock. rock. Yeah. Yeah. Dork Rock. I think so. Yeah. Dork rock I mean, it's for sure. it's just yeah, but it's <laughs> but at the same time it like transcends its own goofy weirdness and becomes just it's just great yeah well something i didn't notice until i, I was reading about them out here just recently you know their their album covers yes they do include stuff about cars the band mm-hmm. is called the cars but very few of their songs include any reference whatsoever to automobiles <laughs> except for drive drive is drive, one, yeah. drive is one of these <laughs> which i honestly also never put in connection with the name yeah, until today I, th- I think there might be yeah, one or two yeah, others, but that's, that's true yeah Actually, there was a uh, one point where I realized that one of their songs, it was on uh, "Shake It Up" or "Panorama." It was, oh, on "Panorama," mm. uh, "Running to You" stylistically was very much like the song "Cars" by Gary Newman. Oh, right. Here in my car. Yeah. And so that just it was funny that a Cars song sounded like Cars, the song, but. I found it amusing. But. <laughs> I'm glad you were amused. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, well, as as we close out here, I'm thinking that uh, hearing a little clap in action. If I don't, know, we may have played that earlier, but that'd yeah. be a great. Let's uh, do it. Great Let's closing song, it. man. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Which clapping action are we talking oh, about? Oh, uh, like my best girl? friend's girl. Oh, oh yeah. so, so repeat that. I thought maybe yeah. there was another Let's clapping action it. you wanted Let's go to. Go out with it. All right. Mm-hmm. Here we Some go. Some clapping to take us out. Yeah. Only in the left here. Uh huh.